something completely different. Okay. Yeah, they've got a C, it's like a CH. And with a, a, there was a uh, guitarist named Rory Gallagher at one time. It was very good. Uh, you know, there's a comedian named Gallagher, too, wasn't yeah. there? Uh, I learned how Gallagher was spelled and pronounced by, you know, looking up Rory Gallagher on YouTube. Oh. Because I saw him, you know, introduced in uh, in Ireland, and they pronounce it Gallagher. And then uh, there's this, there are quite a few uh, streets and things named after him. Oh, uh, back in Ireland, back in his hometown, and they they show it when they name the street after him. It's written in the English spelling of Gallagher, and then in the way the Irish would spell Gallagher. So that's how I learned that. Okay, you know. <clears throat> that's disgusting. Oh, by the way, we're recording. No, okay. on a podcast now. Oh, all right. No. Um, do you want to do the intro or anything like that, or are you just happy as we are? Because I'm going to do an intro later on. No, oh, we're doing just fine, you know. Okay. There isn't any wit or wisdom. Cause <laughs> <laughs> it just ain't in me. We're just <laughs> not very bright. No, no. Come on. We're going to have a janitor. Come on. Oh, man. Yeah, my uncle, uh, Les, he was a window wizard. Uh, that was the name of his company. Um uh, he, he passed away here uh, a couple of years ago, but uh, he was he was a self-employed, everyday handyman for twenty years or something like that. But his his main thing was he he cleaned windows, mm-hmm. and his uh his saying every time he had to deal with a customer that was just stupid, or that was just absolutely rude, or just was inconsiderate, or just didn't understand how things worked, and just wanted him to take care of it. You know, his that was his uh his catchphrase was uh. Fucking janitor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can go with that. Oh, by the way, for anybody that's listening, we're eating tacos right now. Um, John has never had fuzzy taco, or well, I guess you've had it like once or twice, something like that. But anyway, I had a shrimp taco. Yeah, he had a shrimp taco from Fuzzy's once. So mm-hmm. I, I bought like a whole smorgasbord of them, and so I'm not gonna tell him to stop eating. So we're gonna help you hear us chew. Yeah, yeah. So blame me, not him. He's cool. I'm just hoping they hear us chew. You know, it's sort of an oral texture to the yeah. podcast. You know? <laughs> Adds a little bit of flavor to the podcast. Yeah, 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 right, right. <laughs> I see what you did there. Huh? Yeah, man. How long? Uh, how long have you been living in Texas? Twelve years now. Uh, Twelve long years. It's just you know, it's just a cultural difference from you know being as far away. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. It's like about 1,200 miles north. Wow. And, uh, you know, different parts of the country are different. Yeah. So you have to adjust to, you know, just the differences in the people because American culture is the same all across the country. You know, that's why we have problems. Nobody realizes that we have separate cultures we have to deal with. I've worked in a bar once uh, in northwestern Pennsylvania, a place called Meadville, PA, that was uh, like Two and a half hour drive east of Cleveland. And my first night, I couldn't understand what anybody was saying to me. I was still in America, you know. No. The guy wants a Kurz Light. And what? A Kurz Light. What? He wanted a Kurz Light. Yeah. But, um, but, uh, two and a half hours away, I can't understand what he's saying. Uh, when I when I first moved back to Sanger, Texas, from uh, Colorado, I lived there for three years. This guy comes up to me, and he's like, he's like, how many you drink? I was like, yeah. He's like, well, uh, you don't come over, man. I got a whole case of Kerr's Light. I'm like, what? What do you have a case of? Kerr's? Kerr's. What is that? He's like, he's like, a silver bullet, man. I'm like, oh, Coors. Yeah. 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 So I have since adopted Kerr's. I call it Kerr's Light because I just, I started making fun of it at first. Yeah. And then, uh, and then it just became part of my normal vocabulary. And now people make fun of me. Well, you used to have to, uh, you used to have trouble getting it. Is uh, Coors was not distributed across the country at the beginning. It was more of a local phenomenon, and it became kind of a deal for people. Oh, we want to get Coors. Well, I got a bus driving out to Colorado. Go and pick up some Coors. So what they do is they would trade Strohs for Coors. Mm. I don't know why. I, mean, I don't know what Strohs is. I'm not gonna lie. There you go. It's just different kind, of, different kind of beer. So what? Uh, but that's what you do. You take a couple of cases of Strohs and you trade it to some guy. <laughs> For a couple of cases of Coors and drive it back. And we got a hold of a can. My mother and I both said, well, I'm going to try this out. And I wasn't impressed. She wasn't impressed. No. And it was just it was part of the fact that we just couldn't get a hold of it. Coors, yeah. is, uh, Coors is one of those beers where it's 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 not bad. 
but it's definitely like, all right, you obviously pulled this out of Walmart. This is not, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, what I drink is Shiner. I love that stuff, and it's 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 like the king of cheap beers. You know, you you go in there, you pay twelve bucks for a twelve pack, thirteen, fourteen bucks for a twelve pack, or whatever it is, and then it's thick. Of course, if you drink, if you drink several cases of it, it starts to taste like chlorine. Oh. But uh, but if, you gotta have that. There's gotta be that one cheap beer everybody can fucking afford. Yeah, that's the go-to. Yeah. That's the go-to. That's right. You gotta yeah. be able, you know. Because the other stuff, you know, you, okay, you drink that until you get drunk. Because by the time you're drunk, you can't taste anything anyway. So why spend your money? Yeah. You, know, you start out with the with the good stuff, you know. But that's another cool thing you got right now. Earlier we were talking about difference between you know way, way back when and now. You know, like when I was young. Yeah. When was yeah. that? By the Too way. long ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was born in 1956, man. So yeah. I'm old. <laughs> the glaciers melted. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Michigan became a, uh, a <laughs> landmass. That's right. Didn't that become point, a state. <laughs> it wasn't a state yet. No. It, it wasn't quite yet. No. But uh, what you've got in the way of beer selection. No. Dude, look at all the craft beers, man. I oh. mean, there's good beer here now, you know? Yeah. It's like it came full circle. It used to be there were all these little tiny breweries in every city. Every city had the brewery. Yeah. You know, and you, you got the growler thing where now you go in, you know, you take your jug in, they pour you some beer, and you head on out because you got your growler container, you know what I mean? Yeah. For the longest time, it didn't exist. There was a time when it did before I was born where you'd send your kid down to the saloon with a bucket. The bartender would pour your kid, could be 10, he didn't care. Yeah. Pour him a bucket of beer, kid take it, you know, pay for it, take it home. Yeah. That was the early growler, you know. That changed and those breweries were dying off when I, in my youth. So I got stuck with Budweiser, Miller, Pabst. You know, you're just mass market beers. Yeah. And now what you guys got is, you know, screw all that mass market stuff. There's some decent beers out there. Yeah, we're kind of shifting back. The balance is starting to show up again. There's there's some beer really worth drinking. You know, you guys got some great stuff. You know, there's local stuff. You got the Armadillo Brewing, Denton. You know, Mm -hmm. it's all kind of cool stuff like that. Uh, St. Arnold's down in, uh, I think it's either Houston or Austin. Yeah. Or San Antonio. It's one of these giant Texas cities. But St. Arnold's is amazing. When did you quit drinking? Did you quit drinking before you came to Texas? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. 32 years ago. Wow. You're significantly right. more than 12. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't even born when I quit. No. <laughs> no, I was not. <laughs> I was not someone you wanted to introduce to your parents. No, I mean, I'm not that, that, guy, that guy right now, really. Like, I just uh, work, go to school, and do a podcast. I swear quite often. That's not really done in room. Uh, you know, Charles Bukowski sounds like fun, but it's a shitty way to live. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that sounds romantic. Look at those poems. Yeah, it's a real poem. Yeah, fuck it. He's a drunken asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he passed out the classical music. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I have no idea who that is. Yeah, it's, it's a beat poet. <laughs> oh, okay. My yeah. bad. Yeah, there's a couple movies made. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was, he was real popular for a long time. And not that he was that good. It's just because, you know, he lived that kind of life. He was a drunken idiot, and for some reason he managed to get laid a lot. Yeah. And he was uglier soon. You know what I mean? Yeah. Was, oh yeah, he was bright ugly, but uh, wound up getting rich eventually. You know, but uh, Modest Mouse has a line uh, about Bukowski. Okay. It's a great read, but he was an asshole. You know? Okay. So he's, you're probably familiar with Modest Mouse. Yeah. Uh, sh- I'm trying to think of one Modest Mouse song that I remember. They play him on the Edge all the time. I don't know. Yeah. 1021 the rock station and denton for anybody that's listening in colorado or the two people that listen to michigan <laughs> uh, no i didn't know anything about the radio around here i, I grew up with a, a radio station that would well it was when dark side of the moon came out we all had it on tape the day before it hit the stores really because the radio station played the entire album before it went on sale in the record stores okay. and everybody in town taped it. Okay. You know, but it was all reel to reel tape. You know? Yeah. 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 Which is like this huge machine, Mickey Mouse here spinning around. Yeah. About this big, you know. I'm, I'm making hand motions like they can see what I'm yeah, doing. Yeah, exactly. I need to get uh, yeah. I need to get cameras in here. That's the next yeah, step. Yeah. <laughs> so we, in the last podcast I did, I on purpose brought visual aids. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
I opened up a portfolio of drawings and started showing this guy and describing it. And no one, no one fooled. Well, nobody see goddamn thing. Yeah, exactly. He's the only guy can see it. But uh, I'll describe it for you. You could be like a four, uh, four year old drawing paintings or whatever. You know, yeah, well, I don't know. You know <laughs> a bunch of scribbles. Know. And that's supposed to be my mommy. <laughs> <laughs> she put this one on the fridge. <laughs> then she took it down because it sucks. <laughs> my parents got called in. Uh, I went to a Catholic school. It's like a second grade. They got called in to speak to the nun because we were assigned to draw Adam and Eve. Yeah. And I drew them naked. Oh. And it was a very big deal. Yeah. Because can't draw them naked. I, I, mean, I don't understand. I mean, my, my dad's dumbfounded because he says, well, didn't the Bible say he didn't have any clothes? Uh, isn't it, that it, the whole just, point? <laughs> this just shows he was paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> hey, All the other kids, they weren't paying attention. They got Adam and Eve, and you know, Adam's wearing a suit with a tie. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was paying attention. I, what? I don't see why they were upset. My dad didn't see why they were upset. Um. I didn't know you went to Catholic school. Mm, that was a long time ago. Man. I, I used to get in trouble in school all the time. Like, uh, so my dad used to get in trouble in school, and so did my uncle. So when I started getting in trouble in school, he had the same kind of. His parents defended him, so he defended me. You uh -huh. know, and uh, I got. Uh, I remember one time I'm, I'm, I'm. The assignment is to draw your house. Uh -huh. So and she the it was it was like a. You need to know what your fire escape plan is. This is like second grade. You need to know what your fire escape plan is for your house. I'm like, Get okay. Get the fuck out. That's yeah, it. exactly. So she's like, draw your windows and draw your door and make sure that you, you draw arrows to the door because that's how you know how to get out. So I drew a fake house and I just drew windows and doors and whatever mm -hmm. and I handed it to her. And I was like, here you go. And she says, this is what your house looks like? Because it was obviously like a child's rend rendition of what he thinks a house is, and he didn't draw his actual house plan, uh -huh. you know? And she's like, this is what this is what you your house looks like? I'm like, no. She's like, why not? I'm like, because I don't, I don't know you. Why would I draw my house? She's like, well, well, the assignment was to, you know, draw your house. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't, I don't want to give you my house plan because your husband might be a thief. And... <sighs> Right there. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. So I got, yeah, I got sent to the principal's office and my dad came in and he was like, well, did, yeah, he answered that correctly. What the hell are you doing? Yeah. Like asking him to draw his floor plan for yeah, that's, his, like, that's right. Are you, <laughs> kids too smart to give you the floor plan. You're just pissed off. Yeah. It's none of your damn business. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that, uh, that happened to me several times growing up. Like, Always. I think that's why I have an authority problem. Because most of the <laughs> authority figures that I dealt with were blatantly stupid and wrong. And I I just didn't really learn how to deal with it properly. <laughs> my parents my parents tried to teach me. Uh, God bless them. But. Well, I don't know. About that, but, you know. Look. The world is run by C students. Yeah. And we all seen the bell curve. You know, there's more of them up here at the average. And there is at either end of really stupid yeah, and we know some of those people. Exactly, we work with some of those people. You know, and, and we they, are and, some of those people. Yeah, let's people. Let's, let's be completely honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're janitors, man. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I can mop. I yeah. can really mop. Man, I can I can mop the shit out of that floor. Like right. I am really good. At, <laughs> I don't care what my boss says. I, our, you know, our superhero is the shoveler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's the man. That's what's up. So you went to you went to school, right? You went to college. Yeah, I did. What'd you go to? What was your exact major? What's it read on your degree? Oh, it's exact major. Yeah. I can't get away with saying, oh, you know, yeah. uh, mops and uh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I no. majored in fucking mops and scrub pads. And... Oh, I've got a bachelor of arts degree. I was an art major. Okay, that's what. And uh, I wanted to uh, go to arts. Well, I wanted to go on and uh, get an MFA, is but a, uh, Cleveland this... State University didn't offer a master of fine arts program uh mm -hmm. the closest two universities were kent state university and it, i started out at kent state by the way oh, really? yeah i did 1975 uh there was still somebody that got shot so you know really oh yeah when when did the um uh, the incident happen the massacre happen oh it was may 4th 1970 oh, okay so yeah oh yeah one guy that didn't finish on time he was like yeah i remember that it was freshman year <laughs> yeah <laughs> We're just going to class, and all of a sudden they start open firing on hippies. <laughs> yeah, most of the people hit were just going to class. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah they were just going to class, and this guy was going to class too. He was there uh, in grad. He was a grad student at the time. 
Mm. You know, his name's Dean Kaler. He was uh, still in graduate school when I went to school there. And uh, oddly enough, but uh, that had an MFA program, also Edinburgh University, which is in northwestern Pennsylvania. And uh, Edinburgh was like a 30-minute drive from my parents' house. My parents had moved to PA. My mother was a bone cancer patient, so I figured, cool, two birds with one stone. Try to get to grad school and help out with Ma at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the wife and I moved there, you know, and it didn't work out. Uh, it was working nine shifts a week, and the uh, restaurant was only open five days. Mm. <laughs> I mean, things, it's a little tiny town you can't make any money you know? yeah exactly what are you gonna do yeah so you know you're just it's uh living week to week and uh i just had to move back to cleveland and never did get to grad school but the whole dream was well i just wanted to go to some little college town three days a week i'll paint that and go home you know exactly you know, that's all it sounded like a good job you know? but you mm. go from there and you know shit happens it, it's gonna happen to every one of you you know you don't know yeah. you don't know what's gonna happen you have no just know that you're going to be up against C students yeah. in your life. The best thing you can do is, um, has been my, my theory. I haven't been able to test it. I'm a 25 year old jackass. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't really have any right to talk about how life is, but, um, I think that you have to plan to be a planner. You have to, you have to be able to adapt and roll the punches. And that's, that's the real skill. All the other, all the other stuff is like, you, anybody can anybody can mop a floor. Anybody can draw. Yeah, you know it, it's what difference or differentiates you from like an employee is. Oh well, my mother just got cancer. I got to take care of her, and uh, I got to raise a kid, and I got to juggle school and work at the same time. How do I make this happen and still attain yeah. my goal and live in relative happiness? You know, without getting bitter or anything like that. So, oh no, you just get bitter. You know. Yeah, <laughs> turn around a two by four. <laughs> yeah, you know? I could have, you know, I could have run a political uh, debate. You know, I just stood back there with a two by four, and after two minutes, the two minutes is fucking up, bang, cross the side of the head. They shut up. I'm yeah. in the next question. Yeah. It sounds easy to me. I don't know why they don't do it. <laughs> you know, you know? And we should all do that. Just get let give everybody a two by four. Somebody screws you on a business deal, pop up side to side of the head. People stay real polite, real quick. Well, that's what yeah. uh, this is like an argument for uh, like bringing back uh, like open carry, like they had in the eighteen hundreds and the uh, like the the dueling, the public dueling or whatever. Yeah, give everybody a sword, that'll work. Yeah, give everybody a pistol or whatever. They said uh, in the seventeen hundreds, uh, we Too lost. Too many C students for the pistols. I've been doing enough gun shows. Well, that's Some the of those thing, guys though. can't find their ass with both hands. You're gonna give them a gun. Yeah, but that's the thing. If you start giving them all pistols, then they all start thinning themselves out, and all of a sudden well, the that's true. They will kill these kill themselves. Out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So. Digger and Nub are going to blow their brains out cleaning out the gun on Saturday night. <laughs> Dark. <You know? laughs> it sounds, sounds fine. You know? Yeah, they said, they said we lost more officers to duels than we actually did to war before 1812 like, really? or whatever. Yeah, well, The officers weren't very bright either. Then, no. right? okay. <laughs> Different world back then. I think um, Andrew Jackson got his law degree when he was like 18 or something like that. Well, yeah, because most of the people didn't live that long anyway. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I heard a I heard a factoid the other day. They said, uh, like, people had the capacity to live to like 70, 78, 80 years old. They existed back then. It's just everybody ended up getting, either getting killed by an accident or murdered or bears or disease or just like something. But huh. like, if you if you put your mind to it and you wanted to live healthy, you could probably had a good shot of. As long as you weren't a jackass, and you'd just be a hermit. You know? Yeah, <laughs> good shot. A hermit with your mouth shut. Well, you'd be surprised because if you're a hermit and you live out in the wild or something like that, I've, th I've thought of this quite often because it's just like kind of my escape plan is go be a hermit. But there's a lot of work in doing that because you gotta make sure you got food, water. Plus, if something goes wrong, there's nobody to help you. Like, yeah. yeah, you fall off a cliff while you're hiking or whatever, you break your leg, and you're all done. This. Yeah, enough. Did you know that uh, if you get a compound fracture and your bone is sticking out of the uh, Skin, you have like 24 hours before that becomes poison and it kills you. Really? Yes. Very, uh, very useful knowledge there. Yeah, I can avoid that. Yeah. So you can semi hermit it. I know a kid, uh, <clears throat> son of a friend of mine, he lives out of his van in San Francisco. Oh, really? They don't want it's expensive living out there. No. And he's trying to make it doing, uh, he works with 
some audio and some musical bits where he does gigs. Mm. And he also is an artist, so he tries to make money on that, too. But obviously, you know, those aren't high dollar and common, you know, paying things. No. So, you know, cheapest thing for him is, okay, moving in a van. It's not paying rent. No. <laughs> you know right, I mean? yeah. So that's the only way he's pulling it off, you know. He's been out there a couple of years living there's, in the van. There's a couple of comedians that I follow. There's a... Uh, they uh they they live out of uh, suitcases and hotel rooms. Yeah, like everything they own is packed into two suitcases and maybe like a computer bag, and then everything mm-hmm. they just go on the road everywhere they go. Yeah. That's an interesting life. I'd like to do something like that if I had like like a million bucks in the in the bank or a hundred thousand or something like that in the bank and just go tour the world like that. That'd be interesting. Or just float around the country, you know. Just, yeah. You know, if I hadn't met my wife and got married, I'd probably be one of those guys you see walking through town with the sun weathered skin and the scraggly hair in the backpack muttering himself while yeah. he's, you know, picking up cigarette butts off the ground. Well, you're basically yeah. like that now and you have a job. And yeah, so right. <laughs> I, I, I bathe on occasion. <laughs> it's that occasional bathing that puts yeah. you over the top. Yeah. You know? Yeah, except for the cigarette butts, we're uh, scrubbing toilets. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I love this job, man. I can't believe I'm like working working at a place like that where I get such a big scholarship to go to school. Like, yeah, I'll clean toilets if you can put me through school. It's worth it. Yeah, yeah. it's like as we were talking before we came in here. You know, I have two sons. You know, one has gone through the university because of the uh, scholarship program because I'm a janitor, and the other one's still in school. I couldn't have done that without it. Yeah, you know. And like I was telling you, there are other, I'd been offered a job I had to turn down, you know, because of that. And that's okay. You know, it's a uh, college is expensive. You know, if you can find a way to get a kid through fine. <clears throat> and you know what? It's not as useless as they try to tell you really. Yeah. I've got, I know enough people that have been told that, well, you know, you can't get any farther in your career cause you don't have a degree, you know? Well, but they, they wouldn't have gotten a job if they had a degree in the first place, yeah. you know, cause I you're all from the. I'm not going to hire them. They got a degree. They're going to want too much money. Now, once when, they're working for them, well, you could go farther, but you don't have a degree. Yeah, exactly. Like, what are you going to do? I mean, uh, I'm sure, like, a degree is is worth something if you get, like, a master's and you're a marketing whatever whiz and somebody's looking for, like, some guy to help them make money or whatever. Like, uh, I was talking to somebody the other day about the marijuana industry that's exploding up in Colorado. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're... They got it regulated to a T, but like, it's just such a fresh industry that people are just boom millionaire, boom millionaire, boom billionaire, boom millionaire, boom hundred thousand dollars a year, boom. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I was texting my buddy who who writes a uh, IT like he does IT, he does code and and all sorts of like infrastructure database type stuff for him out there. And uh, I was like, dude, I'm thinking about getting a master's. Like, I'm uh, I'm thinking about just going for like my master's in marketing. He was like, do it. I'll, uh, I can get you a job out here. Like, boom, immediately. You know, that it, it's like walking into a place like that sometimes. But at the same time, like, wh- what am I going to do with a, what am I going to do with a, like a marketing degree and I want to go make movies or something, you know? Have you ever gone and, gone and had to, and this is where we can actually bring our janitor skills into play. No. Okay. You go in, you got to enter trash from office to office to office. Mm. Do yourself a favor and look to see what their degrees are in. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised. We got people sitting behind desks that they took a look at their degree and go, you kidding me? (laughs) (laughs) Their their degree is no more useful than mine. I could be sitting in that office. Exactly. Really, you look through some, because they all put their degrees up on the wall. Just go and look through. Uh Animal science. (laughs) That's one of the cool things about this, uh, about that being a janitor in a big building like that, where there's, there's, you can go through there and you get to clean those offices and like, dude, every single one of those desks have the coolest knickknacks ever. Like people have like Zen gardens or like those, those magnet stacky things. Like you build like a pyramid out of magnets and then you can re- deconstruct it and put it back up and it's the Eiffel Tower and you put it back yeah. up and you know what I mean? And like. They have they have too much time on their hands. Yeah, well, it's basically yeah. what it comes down to. All that stuff, all that stuff was uh, was created before the uh, smartphone. Now everybody has one of those, and knickknacks are useless. Yeah, you know, well, they take up space. <clears throat> That's crazy, how, dude. Five five years ago, 
I had a flip phone and I was taught well, like people that had smartphones were like, boom, dude, you just dropped 500 bucks on a phone. Are you crazy? No, sir. Now I'll drop $500 on a phone and keep it for as long as I can. But like, yeah, you can't even live without it. Like there's so many different applications that you can use with that thing. It's just completely incorporated in everyday life. That wasn't like that five years ago. No, it's true. Now, I saw a cartoon not long ago where Spock <laughs> and Kirk are there. They're opening up their, uh, their communicators. Communicator, yeah. And there's two guys standing there with their phones. Says, That's all it does? <laughs> You're kidding me. Yeah. You mean, That's it? That's all? And they go, ah, and they laugh at them. You no, know, exactly. Yeah. They're going to go back up to the Enterprise all embarrassed because their communicator doesn't do anything and the primitive life forms below can do more with their phones. That's pretty crazy how like how how right Gene Roddenberry got it and how off he was. Like he he basically predicted the internet. He, uh, there's like a ton. I did this I did this uh, paper one time for one of the classes that I'm in or I was in uh, about like Star Trek's influence on everyday life or whatever. The chair that Chris Pike sat in the 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 wheel. Did you ever watch Star Trek? When it first came out. Okay. But uh, there was, like, this motorized chair that wasn't around in, like, 1963 or whatever when it was when Star Trek was out. And that became, like, a big thing. The communicators, uh, the like I said, the internet, um, like, warp drive. We, we came up with two different formulas for it now. There's yeah. this, this guy in Mexico that came up with one. And he's basically, he was like, yeah, we could, we could create warp drive in theory, but we need a power source that's about the size of Jupiter. And then NASA... Like came up with their with their version of it, and they were like, well, "We can do warp drive, but it would take like basically the same amount of energy that the entire United States blows through in like the span yeah. of a year." And we or, know from the show that the, the lithium crystals aren't worth shit anyway, so don't bother with them. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember though. The uh, they never work. Is it? Yeah, yeah, because Scotty's always having to he fix just, them. Oh yeah. Well, he basically admitted in like one of the movies he's, he just breaks shit so that he has something to do. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah. it's like, how long is that gonna take, man? <laughs> About two days, but because I'm awesome, I'll do it in two <laughs> or three or whatever. Like, oh, we watched that when we were kids. My dad used to watch it. Okay, when it first came on. Okay, and it didn't really take off when it first came on. It only took off in reruns. You know, my dad wouldn't miss it. You know? Yeah. My they sat there and watched it, and they had some other, and it was for them that was a big deal. Yeah. I mean, it looks primitive now, in comparison to some of the other crap we were watching on television. Yeah, exa- <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, T.J. Hooker or whatever wasn't a great show either, but it wasn't very innovative either. They weren't trying to put people in space and whatnot, you know. No, nothing was innovative. No, no. <laughs> like, dude, we have this thing that if if we point it in that direction. <laughs> For about five minutes, and then hit the, this button, we can watch what just happened. <laughs> like, <laughs> Sixty years ago, we could not do this. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That was a big deal. My dad watching television. He grew up on radio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so did uh, him. Uh, video. Yeah, that's uh Matthew Rand is kind of pointing at me. Uh, my, that's one of my uh, radio buddies. He's been on the oh, podcast okay. before. This isn't somebody we have to hit. I mean, if you want to, well, I've he, hit him he before. Looked, he looked nice enough. Uh, you know. Yeah, I've punched him before. Uh, for those that did aren't Pete listening, there's a uh, no. Nah, I don't think Pete met him. Oh uh, yeah, Pete did meet him. Okay. But uh, we're sitting in the in this uh, studio, and there's uh, several different recording studios in the in the building, and there's a glass wall between them. And my buddy Matthew Reyna came up and started waving at us as we were doing this. So uh, here he comes. Come on in, Matt. Come on in. Sit down, man. You want to do a podcast? Oh, I, well, I gotta finish some work first. So I'll be back. Okay. It's it's not about anything, Sam. You want to sit down and have a conversation? All right. Well, making this awkward. We're recording right now. The green light's on. Either sit down or get out. Well, there's... I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you do whatever you want. Yeah, but they're playing they're with the my strippers. Best friend. And we're stuck in here doing a <laughs> podcast. Yeah, they have to watch TV and walk around. <laughs> They'll be back in. Will it be hookers and fireworks later? Uh, yeah, man. I mean, oh, okay. whatever you want, John. Thanks we can, we for can coming do that. On, by the way. Oh, sure. Hookers and fireworks. <laughs> and a wife's back home going, <laughs> the old man's out of the house for a couple hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me time. Me. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> John, can you do another podcast? Yeah. Know, like once a week. Uh, <laughs> just get him the hell out Damn of the house. Damn it. He doesn't go to church, so. <laughs> yeah, get him the hell out of the house. Yeah, put him in the, the recording studio. <laughs> he doesn't fish at night, so. 
Yeah. Never mind. We, we, the bunch of us got together because she's used to anything. Yeah. The woman's immune. Okay. Your wife is immune? No, she's immune. It just doesn't matter. Oh, she seemed she's, pretty she's, chill. Yeah. She's had to live with me. She's had to live with my two boys. Yeah. She's immune. You know, she's yeah. met my brothers. You can't. You can't. She's like a rock. You can't talk to her. Yeah. But uh, so she's used to the stories. So one interesting one just happened to thinking of one. I was thinking of the hookers and the fire engines and all that. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of guys. <laughs> well, okay. A friend of mine was taking care of a fire engine yeah. for a fraternity he belonged to. They had an old fire engine. Yeah. And it needed some work. And he tells his frat brothers, I can work on it over the summer. Okay. Take the fire engine. Well, <laughs> a college age kid has got his own fire engine. Yeah. What do you think's gonna happen? Was, Guys! Yeah. <laughs> Wanna go for a ride? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we got we about six cases of beer in the back of a fire engine. <laughs> you know? It's it's the regular, you know, it's a fire engine. Yeah. Bell and everything, you know? So we're going down the street, you know, and somebody's ringing the bell. Somebody else is shouting, bring out your dead. You know? <laughs> We, we, we pull up in front of a, a Baskin Robbins and someone I, that I don't know who it would have been uh, stood up and made some kind of speech. It was an anti celery speech, as I recall. Yeah. Uh, and then off they went. Later, found out from my father that he knew half the police department. Oh, yeah. We, and they knew exactly where you were all night long. It was constant reports. Oh, they got her over here. That was just one, you know? Yeah, exactly. It was just one. The other one was the this is a good trip. We rented. I was at Ohio University. We rented a bus. It was a local transport bus, mm-hmm. as in the kind of bus you take from here to there about town. No. Yeah. You know, it would be like if I just rented one of the Denton buses. You know what I mean? From the city. We rented from the city. No. Yeah. And uh, unhooked the odometer. We had no idea how far we would go. Exactly. And we drove from uh, Athens, Ohio to Cincinnati. It's about a five-hour one-way trip. Okay. You know, well, of course you start out with beverages. Yeah. You know, and everybody's got a six-pack, twelve-pack, and about a half hour down the road, we pull into a distillery. We well, it's not a distillery; it was a distributorship, and somewhere there's somebody that's got a picture of about fourteen guys all taking a piss on a loading dock at the same time. I don't know who has it, but it exists. Yeah. Yeah. I was one of those guys, huh? and we unloaded. <laughs> Three kegs of beer into the bus. <laughs> we finished the three kegs of beer by the time I got to Cincinnati. But that was okay. We had beer waiting for us. Uh, part of the trip was you had to dress in some kind of ridiculous outfit. You know, we reached Cincinnati and, and it occurred to us that no one had thought to bring food oh. for the weekend. We no. remembered beer. Yeah. Well, we, we just didn't, we didn't remember the, food. Yeah. You uh, need... So into the grocery store we went. Everybody yeah. grabs a grocery cart, <laughs> yeah. and everybody goes ro- dashing across, you know, the floor in the grocery store. And you know, I mean, my girlfriend was just wearing a, a teddy with tennis shoes and thigh high stockings, and one guy was only wearing a bathrobe, carrying a copy of the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> you know, and one guy was dressed like a rabbit. And and of course, we all get to the cold cuts with the hot dogs and the salami and the bologna is and. We gather all up, and then we all head back to the cash registers and leave all the shopping carts where they were. Huh. And, you know, a buddy of mine's arguing with the manager. You were going to spend a lot of money in here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we buy our stuff. We go out. Standing on top of the bus is my friend Scott Minium. Now, Scott had decided to wear for the occasion. I don't know if you're familiar with priest vestments where they have that long cape-like thing. That they wear over everything when they're saying mass. And it looks like they a, look like a bat when they raise their hands, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rope thingy. It's got a cross. The, in the like front. Baptists wear that stuff too. He, right? he had an orange one. Okay. Oh. And his face was painted orange. Oh no. And he had pheasant feathers sticking out of his hair. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and, and he's on top of the bus in the middle of the grocery <laughs> store parking lot, and and God said to Moses, <laughs> he's preaching to the people. We got to get him down off the top of the bus before the cop showed up. Yeah. <laughs> so we, so we, we wind up at this little farm that we, yeah, it, it was a, a drunken bacchanal for the whole weekend when we ran out of booze and had to drive into Kentucky the next morning <laughs> to buy alcohol again. And on the way back, a friend of mine was listening to the Waiting for Columbus album by Little Feet and pounding his wine bottle to the music in a big cooler on the ice and broke his wine bottle 
<laughs> so this guy's straining wine through that little petcock underneath the, you know, under, underneath the beer cooler through his T-shirt into a cup so he doesn't waste the wine. Yeah. Yeah, that's how we got back home that way. <laughs> just one of those, just one of those things we did. Yeah. Back yeah. when we were kids. Yeah. And the day they shot the television, we did that too. Yeah. I remember shooting TVs. Yeah. I guess everybody had to shoot a TV at that time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we did that. Or the other one was when we were next across the street from a church, and we get up early because mm. you know, services were early, and we weren't going to attend. No, I mean, we just wanted to be up before services started so we could set up outside. Mm. And we put all the speakers outside the window. We were we were big Frank Zappa fans, by the oh, way. Oh no! And <clears throat> coolers of beer, you know, and you know the lawn furniture. Yeah, and it's right across the street. Is the, they call it the Newman Center, which at many universities or Catholic churches, right. uh, located on campus. <coughs> and I remember we. This is gonna be a very rude comment, people. Not safe for work. We played a Frank Zappa song that the refrain was "Fuck me, you ugly son of a bitch," <laughs> at full volume <laughs> while we're sitting in lawn furniture drinking beer. <laughs> Well, people are solely trying to pull into the church, you know, and you're getting a dirty look from the old lady because she disapproves of us. <laughs> and you're getting a dirty look from the old man because, well, he wishes he was there with you. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that, and he pissed because he's got to go to church with the old lady, you know. And then listening about how she disapproves of you when he wishes the hell he was sitting right there with you. <laughs> It was worth getting up early on Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh man, yeah, I, yeah. It's a, so you know that's why I wound up having to quit drinking because we were we became the people that were just parties that people were afraid to attend. One of you were uh, was going to end up uh, yeah. in jail or yeah, dead or dead or mm -hmm. something. Uh, well, I got an ex roommate's in jail right now for murder and a drug deal. So you know, Ooh. I guess it's like, you know, I guess it kind of shows where you can go. We were all going to get together and have a group portrait taken, you know, send them a little postcard of all this waving. It was yeah. a wonderful time. Wish you were here. You know. See, one of the ones that went to the uh, on the bus trip? <laughs> no, he wasn't. Oh, okay. I met him after. <laughs> I met him after moving back to Cleveland. We, to, we went on little adventures like going to homes where we didn't really know the people for yeah. business purposes, except we were told, you know, as soon as we enter, keep your mouth shut, don't look at anybody. And you walk in, there'd be a bathtub in the middle of the living room, shotguns lined up along the wall, and yeah, and you kept your mouth shut and you just left. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so so it's, you're you're much better off that I'm sitting here drinking blueberry soda. Blueberries, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my uncle was telling me one time he went to a uh, uh, one of those Hell's Angel biker hangouts. It's the closest thing that he ever got to. Uh, like hanging out with Hell's Angels or whatever. They they owned a bar, I guess, and they used to party there. And you had you had to know less because like the man built a log cabin essentially out of spare parts. Like cool, yeah. Like <laughs> a neighbor, like uh, it wasn't completely spare parts or whatever. But a neighbor would be like, "Hey man, I need a tree cut down." He'd be like, "Cool, I need a hardwood floor to build. I need cherry, maple, and pine." You know, like, <laughs> like <laughs> I'll cut it down for you. Get it out of your yard if I can keep it. <laughs> Deal. You know, that's how he was. Gotta respect that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he uh, he drove Hondas because in his mind. They're easier to work on. They're easier to replace the parts. They're cheaper, and so he he drive he drove a Honda um, motorbike into a into a Hell's Angel bar, and uh, yeah, they you don't talk shit to Hell's Angels. You no. don't because they'll kill you. Yeah, yeah, they do that. <laughs> they <laughs> like you'll you'll end up buried, and then anybody that's seen you that isn't a Hell's Angel that watched you get buried will also end up getting buried, you know? Mm -hmm. So they were giving them shit. And the other thing is is you don't you don't roll over and and pretend to be like a girl either. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't be timid in there either because they don't respect that and you probably end up getting buried. You must be prepared into <laughs> Yeah, Hell's Angels are crazy. They're really easy to understand if, like, <laughs> if you got those two rules down, just regulate yourself, don't be an asshole, you know? But, uh, yeah, he went in there, and they were all giving him shit for, uh, for driving a, for driving a Honda. You just be prepared. Oh, yeah. Whoa, what is this? It's a blackjack. Explain to these people what this thing does and what it is. Oh, blackjack? Um, I'm not supposed, you're not supposed to be able to have one of these. Uh, hey, it's a it's Mike talking to the mic. No, 
the microphone. The microphone? The yeah. Big, the big bulbous <laughs> thing in front of me? It's, the headphones. It is, it's practically a homosexual activity. Oh, it's, no. <laughs> no, no. You just see, that's why I always have it turned to the side. So I was like, a money shot. You know, okay. Like, <laughs> ah, <laughs> gross. <laughs> no. No, all it is is uh, it's a piece of leather. It's got a chunk of lead inside. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's got a oblong type shape. That's all it is. It's yeah. A, you, just don't hit us in the, on the top of the head. You probably split the skull open. But yeah. I'm an old person, and you know those old people are frail and need to take care of themselves. Yeah, exactly. You can't afford a six hundred dollar pistol, so. No, no, but. not and then I'm janitor salary, so. Yeah, exactly. Pity a poor old man, and it has to depend on a piece of leather for his life. Yeah, yeah, it's not, a, it's not a bad place to be. But anyway, the end of that story was they gave him crap about that, and his response was, "Uh, oh, yeah. rice burns cheaper than gas." Yeah, like, there you go. <laughs> like, the fire with fire, man. That's well, how you know, work. The bikers are okay. I mean, they're not as bad. Like the lead, they're not. They're not like as bad as like Hunter S. Thompson made it out to be. When I was uh, working in a bar in Columbus, Ohio, uh, they would have a bike week. Yeah. And at the fairgrounds, it would be a big collection of bikers, and the bikers had a better reputation than the Ohio State football team. The bar owners would prefer. The bikers than the football team. Football team create havoc, bust the place up. Bikers come in, they order their beer, they pay for their beer, they drink their beer. That's it. Yeah. You don't give them a hassle, they drink their beer, and they leave. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. You know, football team's another story. Oh, yeah. Well, <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, I got to see the uh, Blessing of the Bikes. You ever go to see one of those things? Or like the uh, the Archbishop or the Pope or whoever shows up and... <coughs> Well, just huge... No, no, my dad used to get his bikes. He had a bunch of buddies would get together and have their bikes blessed by a local priest. But oh, no, really? I never saw a big thing with, you know, like you're talking about. Right, right. They do that in Michigan quite often. That's another one of those uh, those Rust Belt states. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Northwest was... Territory. Yeah, it's a... I used to go in, in Columbus, speaking of which, there was this little place across the, well, across the street and just down the way from the house I lived in called the Hey Hey Bar and Grill. Okay. That was its name. And it'd just be motorcycles in the front of it. It was the closest bar to the house, so you know, yeah, is the one to go to. And you walk in, and it's one. Of, it's exactly what you would imagine, you know, with the jukebox that plays the entire Hank Williams song selection. Yeah, if you like it, senior, not, <laughs> senior, no, doesn't no, matter. No, that pussy Hank Junior. We, we listen to Hank Senior in this place. <laughs> this, this is what we were listening to. God damn it. Yeah. Okay, that's the kind of place it was. I was listening to his grandson today, Hank Three. Really? Yeah, he's pretty good. Well, good. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, senior. So you go in there, and you know. The guy comes up to me. This guy's about like six four. I'm no taller than like five ten, five ten and a half. You know, well. I'm gonna touch five eleven there. And uh, he's he's got the standard Levi jacket missing the sleeves. You know, he's wearing colors. Uh, and just claps his hand on my shoulder. You're my pool partner. I'm Hawkeye. You know, you know, when a guy that big. Just comes wearing colors, puts his hand on his shoulder. No. His name's Hawkeye, and you're, pool, you're his pool partner. You are his pool partner. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, definitely. Yes, and what? you're determined, <laughs> God damn, I hope we win. <laughs> it's just, I better be good. I really hope I don't fuck this up. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope I don't screw this up. I was going to need drinks because you know, I'm not really a good pool shot. Yeah. The only shot I had was one I was not sober. No. You know, because... I, today, if I were to start this new pool, I'd stink. I can't play. I'm like right there with you. I can't. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm way better when I have three beers. Yeah. Yeah. So we go in there, and it's one of those where at some point in time, we're not looking good. And Hawkeye's like, Trout? I went by Trout back then. It's a long story. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> if we lose, I'm going to buy the beer. Because we're just playing for beer. We're not playing for money or anything. Yeah. yeah. And I must have had enough beers because I actually had confidence. We're going to win this one, and we won. Yeah. So I sunk the shots, and he's all happy. And he disappears. A few minutes later, he comes back. I don't see a beer in your hand. Oh, well, uh, you know, nobody handed me a beer yet. Yeah. Oh, we won, and you didn't get your beer. You wait right here. Down the bar I went. There was an animated conversation at the end of the bar. Yeah. Back he came with a beer. Clapped me on the shoulder. You're good people. You come in here anytime you want. Oh. I never went back in again. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. 
it was a mistake going in there. But once you walk in, a crazy part of you says, well, I'm here. I might as well. Uh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody was telling me, it might have been you, that they went to, uh, like, Italy. And the same thing happened. My son went to Italy. Okay. And what happened there was he started speaking with someone in a pizza place where you got a deal from the hostel. Okay. You say the hostel, you got a coupon to go to a particular pizza place. What is a hostel? The hostel is a, like a little place you go to stay. And in the movies, they take you away and carve you up into little pieces. That's another story. Yeah. But officially, a hostel is a place for travelers to stay. Usually young people, they travel through Europe. It's a like a hotel. way of getting around. Yeah, it's, it's a little tiny area. You know, they share a room usually. You don't get your own room, that kind of thing. Okay. It's usually college students. And uh, so he does, and he begins talking with someone there who speaks a little bit of English and wants to practice the English, wants him to meet his is it his dad or his grandfather? His grandfather. Okay. So he gets to go to meet the grandfather. Oh, they get along well. The grandfather says, where are you going? And he tells him, I'm in Italy. I'm studying for school. Yeah. It's one of those things. And he says, I'm going to be going here and here and here. Here's where you're going to go. Go here for lunch. And then go over here. And the other day, you go here for lunch. And he lets, sets up this entire itinerary yeah. of restaurants to go to. You know, you got to go there. Yeah. My son's like, well, okay. And he didn't know. Yeah. He talks it over with uh, some of the guides that are in charge of the trip. And, I don't know. You know, in this part of Italy, there are people you might not want to associate with. Yeah, exactly. And, you know. But anyway, son figures out what the hell. So he goes, he walks in, and there's this place. It's all black tie. <laughs> yeah. And he's a college student. He's got his crappy jacket on. You know, he's got his jeans on. And not dressed for a black tie restaurant yeah. kind of place. All he does is mention the old man's name. Oh, oh we got a table for you. Right over here. Yeah. It's gotta be a mistake, right? No, yeah. no, no. We know exactly who you are. You come over here. Yeah. Seen him at the table. No bill. And my son went through that entire itinerary. Wow. And he never paid for anything. Every single one. <laughs> and it was always top drawer places. Oh, yes. We know who you are. Your table's over here. Yeah. <laughs> and when he made his way back, he was again speaking with the grandfather. I said, well, did you go here? Did you go there? And he told him because he followed the advice and went to all the places the guy said yeah. to go to. Oh, it's wonderful. And he was told before he left this. If you ever decide you want a job here in this country, you just let me know. Yeah. And as long as I'm alive, you will have a job with me. That's and should I pass, if you were to visit my grandson here, and he is to give you a job. Oh. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. He, he didn't well, stay in Italy. Uh, I would have. But, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I probably I wouldn't have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, sure. Thanks, man. And it never showed up again. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Ah, he came back. With it. It was great, some great stories from over there. You know? well, how many bodies that dude went through? <laughs> how many times did they throw somebody on that, 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 that big river? And then, like, some one of those gondola boat dudes, like. Like just paddled on top of a body over top of it that that guy threw in there. <laughs> and nobody says anything. No, 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 because there's flies in there, too. Oh. So, you know, we were, um, you and I have an interest in cartooning, and that's how we ended up actually talking over, actually coming over here and doing this kind of deal. Yeah. And I noticed you, you, you're more of a, you have an interest in animation. Yeah. And I was just wondering, what was like a, when you were a kid, what were the cartoons that you were watching that you favored? You okay, know, what was hot when you were young that you really liked when you were growing up? So when I was when I was growing like a real, I have I have chunks of my life like segments. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? I go from one stage to the next to the next. So the first segment was we had tapes because back in the day in like the early 90s there was no internet there's no cable there's uh -huh. no nothing i mean they have cable and whatever but like we didn't you know that was rare yeah so i had tapes and i would watch the same tapes over and over so I w you're looking at bugs bunny obviously number one mickey mouse um and then you're looking at uh like speed racer I had a couple of those tapes uh -huh. and then uh I think there was like another one that was like an old school anime, like Speed Racer uh, quality, but it was like Bible stories or something like that. I remember specifically because uh, they would open the Bible and then they would go back in time uh -huh. 
and they'd, they'd be there talking to David or, or or Adam and Eve or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I used to watch those all the time. And then Veggie Tales was like my 3D animation influence. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure you could anyone can do those now. Those Veggie Tale ones, those old school 1990 like Larry the Cucumber. It, uh, it sounds familiar. Um, you never watched Veggie Tales? You're no, blowing tra- my no, mind, no, no, dude. No, I'm trying. I'm trying to think because uh, I may have met the guy that drew them. Oh. I can't remember his name. So I was at a, um, a comic convention in uh, Arlington. And I think the guy that did Veggie Tales was at one of the tables. I was talking to him for a while. Okay. No. They had a Christian slant to the. Uh, yeah, it was all like. Uh, I like, think that. Yeah, I yeah. don't remember his name. I, really, I can't remember his name. It was a nice guy, though, because I remember was, seeing the picture. It was a great series, man. I remember, like, uh, one specifically. Uh, I used to be afraid of monsters and demons and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, because my mom was a kind of a silly person when I was growing up, and like she would she would watch horror movies in the house, and she would not make sure that I'm not out of the room, so I'd like kind of sneak out and watch, uh-huh. like so somebody getting ripped apart by a freaking like an alien. Remember, remember that movie Mars Attacks? I remember when that oh, came yeah. out. That freaked yeah. me out. So uh, that one, and uh, see, there was like another one where like this this werewolf was eating people. It just turned into a werewolf and just started eating people. And I was like, oh. But when it would turn into a werewolf, like the skin of the person would, it wouldn't, it wouldn't just like morph. Uh-huh. Like his human skin would explode and there'd be a werewolf underneath. So it's like a violent transformation. Okay. So anyway, I was scared of monsters. Okay, <laughs> I was like I four or yeah. five years old. And uh, VeggieTales had this, had this, uh, this God is bigger than any monster there is. And they had like a giant Godzilla made out of a, like an eggplant or something like that. Some dumb crap. I don't remember. But, uh, yeah, I used to watch that tape all the time. Larry Boy. There was another one about like lying, like don't lie. So I always tried to uh-huh. like, yeah, that kind of like helped shape my idea on honesty. You know, I try not to ever lie to anybody because I don't want to have to keep up with, with fibs or whatever. There was like this little, this little grape that was like the fib monster, uh-huh. and every time the the little broccoli kid would would lie, the grape would get bigger, and by the end of it, it was this giant giant thing like like it was like i don't remember what it was but uh yeah the, he just told the truth and the thing exploded and it was the end of it but yeah i remember i remember those specifically because it was it was watchable cartoon animation but you if i were to skip from that i remember uh like my mom got cartoon network so like dexter's lab and all the cartoon cartoons from you know what i'm saying dexter's lab mm-hmm. and uh uh, Powerpuff Girls. I remember the the animation on that's pretty sick. Uh, Samurai Jack, and then like WB cartoons like Pokemon and uh, Red Rover and uh, like pretty, pretty anyway from like Warner Brothers. Uh, Jackie Chan Adventures used to watch that. Dragon Ball Z is probably like my biggest influence as it is now. It's been with me since I was like thirteen all the way up until like right now. Like you you, you throw that yeah, that it, show it seems, on. It seems to have had a huge influence on a lot of people. Yeah, it's I think it's the top selling anime in the whole world. I think uh, Pokemon's the biggest anime franchise, but oh. that's because of the games and the cards and all that shit. Yeah. But the actual cartoon or whatever, I think that's Dragon Ball Z. I know they they broke a record uh, two movies ago. They broke a record uh, where like the main character gets to fight like the god of destruction or whatever, okay. and uh, they drop like six hundred grand into the into the thing. And anime, for anybody that doesn't know, it's really cheap. Like it's super cheap to make that stuff, but they 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 broke like records on how much money they spent on an anime film in the world. But uh, I never watched Ren and Stimpy. Um, everybody tells me that they're super great, but like, uh, what's the guy that did Ren and Stimpy? John something or another. His name is John Crick Falusi. John Crick Falusi. Yeah. yeah. And he also worked on the New Adventures of Mighty Mouse at one point. Disney movies too. I used to watch a ton of those. I used to watch those all the time. Oh, yeah. Crick Lucy is not Disney. No, 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 no. But I used to watch those. Yeah, too. a lot. Of parents made sure children watched lots of Disney movies. Well, um, you know. Ren and Stimpy was like, like if you were to take all the the stories of like Disney animators putting genitalia on the in their cartoons. <laughs> Like the guys that did that went to work for Ren and Stimpy. Like that's like, like they're so innocent. You could watch that as a little kid, and then you go back and you're like, oh, oh no, he didn't just say that. That's I'm an adult, and that's bad. Oh god. <laughs> like uh, Invader Zim was like that too. Oh yeah, you ever watch that show? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, there was one episode where um, I read uh, uh, Johnny the Hanasinimal Hanasinimal Maniac. That's, yeah. that's right. Johnny the Hanasinimal. 
Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. Uh, what's, yeah, the, yeah. what's the dude's name? Uh, John? Jonan, Jonan Vasquez. Yeah, Vasquez. Yeah. yeah. Or Vasquez. I don't know how to, how to say his name. The, but, uh, yeah, that dude's amazing. It's a very disturbed book. Well, it's a very <laughs> disturbed individual. He's probably worked through a lot of issues when he put that book out. It probably helped him through a lot of stuff. <laughs> but, yeah, man, that's and I had the black and white copy, so okay. I don't know if he did a color one or not, but like I, I only read the black and white copy. Yeah, so the black and white for anybody that doesn't know, Johnny Homicidal Maniac is about this dude that um, he has a house of his own. He's probably about twenty five in his mid twenties, and he murders people. He just like people that annoy him, people that like he just. It's like if a comedian were to sit there and rant about things that pissed him off. Okay, take take those things that piss him off, and then the people that 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 uh, commit those transactions, transgressions, and then put them into a house and then murder them, like Jeffrey Dahmer style. She like he's cutting up people in bathtubs. He's got like the wall. Remember the wall? Yeah, the he's, wall was smoking yeah. up blood. Yeah, yeah. He would like he would like chain some dude to a wall and it was like somehow leak. a likable kind of guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like kind of pull for him. Yeah, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm saying all the bad about it. It's just like he, he, you could relate to this homicidal serial yeah. killer. It was the best. Freaking cartoon ever, but the black and white, it was like watching uh like psycho where like the the almost the chocolate syrup was worse than actual blood because it looked yeah. like it was like colloided already, or uh, what do you call it when it gets all coagulated? It looked like it was coagulated already. Yeah. They had all these little obsessive drawings and little writings in the margin. Yeah. You know, just, he took the time to do that. Yeah. yeah. Or uh the the Johnny the Homicidal Maniac wrote his own comic strip too. It was called uh Yeah, I did. Happy Noodle Boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, that that actually influenced one of my cartoons. I used to do this uh, Super Stick Man. So, like, it was a superhero stick figure. And uh -huh. he had, like, a cape and gloves. And, like, somebody would say something stupid. And he would just laser beam them with his with his eyes. Oh, okay. And then that was the end of the cartoon. That's it. They would, they, they'd say something stupid. He would rant. And they would argue with him. And then, boom, he'd, he'd kill him. That's it. Done. <laughs> like, but it was, it, Yeah, it's interesting because everybody has a little... Like, I can relate to what you're talking about because my kids were watching some of the same cartoons. Yeah. You know, Dragon Ball Z, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Speed Racer goes back to when I was a kid. Well, you I know, mean. I was, I was like around 10 or 11 years old when I first saw Speed Racer. That movie that you know? sucked so yeah. bad, dude. And that's a, a function of the Second World War. Uh, you were trying to make uh, animation. Yeah. You know, they didn't have the money. Yeah. So that's why you had a lot of that dead space where there's no motion. Exactly. You know, just so I can make a cartoon where nothing's really happening, but they can still get one with some movement. You know, it's just all yeah. stuff trying to save money. You know? It's just all it's just all uh, keys and breakdowns. There's no in between frames. Just uh, oh, how is it falling out of your pocket I, when I you're sitting no, on it? I have no idea. You are a strange individual, my friend, and I love it. Don't no, ever no, stop. Idea. I don't have idea what <laughs> happened. When you're old, you know, it's just people get up and offer you their seat on the bus. I'm not dead yet, honey. Just yeah. sit down. <laughs> I've seen this meme today on Facebook where uh, it was a picture of an old man on a train. It said somebody offered my grandfather the uh, uh, the seat reserved for elderly, and he grabbed the uh, he grabbed the the handicap bar, the uh, vertical handicap bar, and then he did one of those uh, like he lifted himself up off the ground and and was parallel. His, his feet were sticking out, and his whole body was parallel to the uh, handicap bar. And he was like, "I'm not dead yet. Just holding." Yeah. Holding this thing like a like a samurai That's sword because we don't care. Yeah, we really don't care. There's no shame because we don't care. Yeah, you know, it's, well, you, you're gonna wear that. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Yeah, you know, we don't. You yeah, know, it, it and it comes from being around long enough to realize that you shouldn't care. Yeah. There's a, a story that's attributed to Helen Mirren, the actress, and I don't even know if it's true that she said it or not, but I like the uh, this you know I like the sentiment of it. It's probably true, and uh, she, I believe it's true. She uh, it was is. asked what she would say now with her experience to her 22-year-old self as a form of advice. Yeah. And she said, I would tell her to say fuck off more often. Yeah. And she's right. Yeah. I seen a, um, a video where this guy was talking about this study. And the study said that they interviewed, I don't know, a thousand people on their deathbeds and said, what, do you, what is your biggest regret? And like a hundred out of... Or 99 out of 100 people, except for the one guy that was like fucking murdered somebody or something like that. Like, I probably shouldn't have done that. But normally yeah. they'll say they regret the things that they didn't do rather than the things they did. You know, they didn't yeah. take more chances. They didn't They didn't live to the fullest extent. And mm -hmm. now they don't get the chance. 
That's why old people don't give a fuck. That's why we're so mean. Yeah. <laughs> you know? exactly. Number one, we're mean because we're old and we know it. That's yeah. why we're angry. Because we're old. I'm right there with we'll you. We'll be dead soon. Well, you know, you're, soon. You were talking about pre-internet times. There's some freshman in college right now. I can't even relate to you. <laughs> yeah, dude, you're not kidding. Because in his lifetime, it's always been there. Yeah, from like uh, 90... When did they? When did the internet start? In, I was in sixth grade when they... Uh, 9-11, 9-11 happened. I was in fifth grade. Oh, yeah. So, and it was it was after that because it was in sixth or seventh grade when we actually had like dial up in the house, uh-huh. and then DSL didn't come until I was like in high school. I mean, it, people had it, but we there were still families that didn't, and I was one of them. You know what I'm saying? Like it just yeah. it, it's not like uh, everybody has a car now. Everybody right. has shoes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, that's that's so. Well, at crazy. one time there was free internet. You know that, don't you? Was there? You could have, yeah, you get your internet for free. How'd that work? Well, you, the first thing you would have to do is have to get on the internet to do this. Yeah. But when you bought a computer, you were set up like if I had the uh, iMac, it would set me up on Earthlink. Okay. Okay. Probably nobody even knows what Earthlink is anymore. I remember the name. Yeah, but it was <laughs> it was like a, you know. It, it was kind of ridiculous because they went, they tried to sell you with having someone come over to set up your computer for you. Yeah. When the iMac had like six photographs. And if you followed those six photographs yeah. in five minutes, you were on the internet. You play with Legos <laughs> you're and figure this out. Yeah. You know, you're on the internet. And they wanted to, they wanted to, you know, have me pay him to send some guy over to do it for me. No, no, no. My wife sat down, looked at the pictures, put it together. She's on the internet. You know. Yeah. And uh, when you get on, you found out there were sites that would have free internet. Yeah, uh, the worst one was run by Kmart. It was called the Blue Light. It really sucked. You had to put up with all kinds of Kmart commercials. On, you know, there were all kinds of ads on it, and it really wasn't that reliable. There was one called Freeway. I remember distinctly to sign up for. There were several. You just sign up. You drop whatever one you were on initially to get on the internet. Yeah, you know what I mean. And uh, free internet, you never paid for it. And all of a sudden, one day, all those sites just dropped out of sight. They disappeared. Yeah. And we were back to paying a monthly bill. Yeah. But that was um, the longest time. I didn't pay a dime to be on the internet. I heard I, uh... You know, our tax money helped pay for it in the first place. Yeah. But why we're actually paying to use something our tax money created is beyond me. But... I heard a, uh, uh, argument that the Telecommunications Act did that. Because that's when that went through was like 98, I think, right? That was during Clinton. It was during Bill Clinton. He passed the Telecommunications Act, but... I'm not blaming mm-hmm. Clinton himself, but like a lot of people, I don't know, I don't know what the argument is. I got to do way more research. I'm talking on my ass here, but they were saying, yeah, essentially that happened. The industry got overregulated, and then the cost of that overregulation got passed on to the consumer, essentially, because businesses are looking at the numbers every day, so they're going to figure out a way to be like, ah, eh, well, let's just charge these people this here, and oh, yeah. technically we're paying for it, but they're going to finance that payment, so it's going to be like we're not doing it ourselves, so. There's always a way. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the Reagan's thing was, uh, uh, what is it, like secret tax or what? I don't know. There was, he was on Johnny Carson or something like that. And uh, he said, yeah, there's a secret consumer tax or something like that. I don't, he didn't say secret consumer tax, but essentially he's like, he's like, look, when you, when you raise the cost of, say, pulling coal out of the ground, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, that's a, immediately that's going, or yeah, if you tax pulling coal out of the ground, that's going to affect who? The the supplier of coal, right? But that guy's not going to pay it. He's no. going to make his customer pay. He's going to raise his prices, and then all of a yeah. sudden everybody's going to pay that for it, and he's not going to suffer for it. So when you tax a business, what you're really doing is you're taxing people, essentially. Mm-hmm. Like, like you're vicariously taxing the, the people for that shit, so... I don't know. Like it, it makes sense if you if you break it down like that, but I'm sure it's way more complicated. And I'm too yeah. stupid to. It makes sense if you own a business because then it works your way. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, you know. I feel like I feel like a lot of times when you're looking at at government policy, you you need to figure out some kind of way that works for both because I think businesses are here to stay. I don't think kind of like we're gonna go communist anytime soon. It's just. No, we already are. There's a police station around here, isn't there? Oh yeah, exactly. If, if, if you got a police that is station, so you're crazy. a socialist. That's so crazy. How come? How come? Uh, I heard this. I heard this argument the other day. And it made sense to me. Like, how come the police aren't like the fire department? Like, they only show up when they're called. Like, how come they have quotas? Like, how come they drive around looking for people to pull over? Like, that shouldn't be a thing. I shouldn't be a target. Income for the city. That's what I'm saying. They're providing income for the city. That's yeah. what I'm saying. They shouldn't be be providing income for the city. That that's should be part of their job. 
There should be, uh, yeah, no. I know. I tell you, it doesn't happen, and they will swear up and down. It doesn't, but uh, without, you know, why? Which answers another question. Yeah. Why people in poor neighborhoods run from the police? Why? Well, you just said it. We got. They, get... they have fines. Yeah. Fines on top of the fines. Yeah. They can't pay the fines. Yeah. So they run. He's running. Boom. <laughs> yeah. And half these dudes that end up like pulling firearms on people, like they're they're getting off on like adrenaline. They're addicted to adrenaline. They're big, they're addicted to drugs. It just so happens that their body itself is producing the drug and cutting out the middleman. You know what I'm saying? That's why people like, get yeah. off on shooting people. Well, you can always run and get the runner's high too. Man, it's so that. crazy, man. We need to get rid of stop and frisk stuff. We need to get rid of the drug war altogether. That needs to stop happening. We need to get rid of this. This police need to need to like go look for things that are wrong mentality. We need to get rid of that. I watched this uh, uh, report. They got rid of the police department in some town in Texas, uh-huh. and this is why I need an engineer so he or she can look that up and Google, like, Google this story, assistance, so I can babble. Yeah. But essentially, um, they hired a private company a security company to do their police work and what they did was okay so we're not running on quotas we're running on safety so these they set up a grid and they're like okay these, these are where all the all the hot spots are so uh-huh. let's let's cross section these hot spots until it's not a hot spot anymore then boom it worked uh-huh. and they did it in like two different towns in texas and it worked pretty good is from what i what i was understanding oh really but i don't know man i don't know about it's it's always you got to understand police react to what they're used to reacting to, okay? No. If blue people are always in trouble, they're going to be afraid, more afraid of blue people than orange people. Exactly. Okay? And it's not always been a matter of color. It's been a matter of who is the underclass. Yeah. Okay? Do you know where the term paddy wagon comes from? No, I don't. Where does that come from? <laughs> the term paddy wagon. <laughs> It's the term used for a vehicle in which one transports paddies. Yeah. Paddies being Irish. <laughs> <laughs> the yes. reason being that there was a time <laughs> when most of your criminal element was Irish because they were the most recent immigrants. Yeah. They were the ones living in the ghettos. They were the poor people. Where there's poor people, there's crime because there usually aren't good jobs. The only way you're going to make money is illegally. So... We were very suspicious around the Irish yeah. because they're the ones that, are, they, you know, Trump would have had, you know, what we're going to do is wall off Ireland. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And that's what it does. But it's a it's a consequence of economic factors. A paddy wagon was where we put paddies because the paddies were the ones that were always the criminals because they were the poor ones. Yeah. That's why in many northern cities, it's traditional for a lot of the Irish to be be police officers the idea being getting them to police their own yeah like as if you were to say okay we're only going to have black police officers in black neighborhoods yeah that's what they happens the in the same uh... thing with the irish they put all irish in there and of course that's why there's a paddy wagon because that's what you hauled the paddies away in we had a uh, pete donnelly in here you remember pete you know yeah pete new york pete at work so yeah, yeah i remember him I saw yeah, this yeah, my bad i'm uh, sorry i uh, <laughs> Talking to the halfway talking to the audience, halfway talking to you. Um, well, yeah, you got Donnelly and Gallagher. I mean, yeah, exactly. But he was saying in New York, the way it, it works is, uh, yeah, they have they have certain neighborhoods where the cops don't even speak English. They yeah. speak Hungarian because they're in the Hungarian neighborhood. Right. They right. speak Polish because they're in the Polish neighborhood. Exactly. You go up to a police officer, you ask him how to get down to whatever Fifth Street, and the cop looks at you like you're retarded. Like I don't speak English. Are right. you? Why do you? Meanwhile, he's employed by the city. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, New York did that. Uh, that's where the bulk of immigrants came, and people stay with their fellows. I the Hungarians want to stay with the Hungarians because they're comfortable with them. The yeah. Italians stay in, and that's why you had all those little gangs. Uh, you heard of Jack Kirby Yeah, through uh, Captain America. He grew talking about growing up in the gangs. Because okay. the gangs were broken down by ethnic groups. You had your ethnic groups in your different areas. You all lived together, yeah. you know, and that's how they survived, you know, you know, jam six families in the one apartment kind of thing, trying to make their way in. Much like what other 
groups are doing even today, only it's not as often that you're doing it in New York City, but that's how you form these little enclaves of little tiny Hungary's, little Italy's, you know, little Germany's yeah. kind of thing. Uh, I come from an area where there's a lot of Middle European influence. You know, that's why I'm not as familiar with Hispanic culture because I was not around it. And here being in Texas, you're more familiar than I. Yeah. You know, those that grew up here are more familiar than I. I grew up with Germans and Czechoslovakians when there was a Czechoslovakian. Yeah. And there were Yugoslavians because there was a Yugoslavia at one time. Yeah. When I grew up, that was an actual country in a map. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, it's Czech Republic. It didn't. And, yeah. Just, you know, know, they, 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 they're, they've been fighting each other as long as they've been fighting each other in the Middle East. So, you know, did you know that Germany as it is was like it wasn't even around until like just before the 19th or 20th century? Yeah, it was like, the Austro Hungarian like Empire. It was, yeah, before that it was like Prussia. Prussia was this little tiny shit up at the top. Yeah. But like, <laughs> that's what they called it though. But like, yeah. yeah, they, uh, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't become Germany until like, 1881 or something like that. Yeah, there's a big Turkish influence in there too because of the constant battle that, between the Turks and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Oh yeah. So that's why it has that odd mixture of if you see styles and dress and decoration of things, you know. Okay. Because you know, like, uh, you know my wife's gypsy. She, yeah. Her, she, her parents came over from Hungary. Okay. You know, so I'm very familiar with that. You know, that's a you know, Hungary is you know Attila the Hun. You know. What general. is what is gypsy like? How did that become a like a They're, thing? Uh, Where the they're pretty much their own society. Um, uh, it's uh, that's like the Jews would have been before there was an Israel. Yeah, they're like their own people, but they don't have a country. Where did they? Uh, where did they come from? How did they? Um, how do you get a gypsy after like five thousand years of well, civilization? Well, they they figure that uh, they may have ultimate. They may have originated in India. Really? Yeah, and uh, some of it is because of the language. Linguistically, it's familiar. Uh, huh. You know, uh, say if you're going to say father in Hungarian, you'd say Abu. Yeah. And in, if you're an Indian, you'd say Abu. Uh. You know, it's very close. Uh, coloration. Okay. Uh, some obviously, if you've watched some of the shows with the British gypsies, you don't see that because the travelers are lighter skinned. But there's a lot of uh, darker skin traditionally. Yeah, yeah. With, you, you, it's like you can. I can tell when I see them. My wife can tell when she sees them because we're used to looking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Esmeralda from the uh, Hunchback Notre Dame yeah, Disney like movie that. was like. There you go. Kind of gypsy, dark. Yeah, yeah, right. And, and they're their own society. And, you know, yeah, they'll rob you blind. And, and uh, yeah, they have to go to segregated schools. And, yeah, you're not a white person if you're a gypsy in Europe right now. You might as well be a black man in Alabama in 1955. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. That's crazy. And so, like, my wife, really my wife's a, schools over there. Yeah, and my wife's a, she's a white girl in America. If she goes to Europe, she's not because she's gypsy. That's insane. But yeah. good luck telling anybody that she's gypsy, though, because she looks like a white girl. Well, she looks well, like an American. She I bet she rolled up and she hasn't been out. She's been working indoors for a while, yeah. and she's had her hair colored because after obviously we're older, so we're all graying. Oh yeah. But she had dark hair, black. And uh, when we first moved down to Texas, she got sent on business to San Antonio, and they all thought she was Mexican down there. <laughs> you ever see that Super Troopers bit? That uh, you ever see the movie Super Troopers? I've seen the TV show. Uh, there's a uh, there's a bit in the movie Super Troopers where uh, there's this Indian guy. He sits down. He's got a thick mustache, uh -huh. and uh, the the state troopers are always at war with the with the local police. That's like the, the gag throughout the whole movie. Okay. And the uh, police chief comes over and talks to the the uh, senior officer. Uh -huh. uh, he's not the he's not the chief for the super troopers or whatever. He's just the the senior dude on duty. And yeah. uh, he's talking to this guy. Dude's Indian, and he's like, uh, "Yes, sir. I'll take the uh, uh, chimichangas and a burrito and a uh, uh, cola and a glass bottle, please." And the other guy's looking at him. He's like the hell is he talking about he's like they think i'm mexican he's like <laughs> you're not like, <laughs> like i don't know if that guy's indian or not i have no idea what his ethnicity is but like he's definitely not he's definitely like asian or european you know he's not not a mexican at all like, yeah, just, <laughs> well i gotta i gotta be spread in my family because like i've got american indians in my family i've got black people in my family i've got gypsies in my family I got hillbillies in my family. Yeah, you're yeah, a, so, so you're you know, a mutt. It, it really is a, is a mutt kind of situation. 
and, and you do see, you know, and there's certain members of my family that are, fuck Christopher Columbus. Yeah. <laughs> you know? He yeah. slaughtered a bunch of us. Okay, he's an yeah. asshole. We don't like him. Screw him. You know what I mean? <laughs> Probably yeah, in hell we, right we, now. We were here. <laughs> you know, fuck him. You know, we didn't go over to your, we didn't, we didn't go over to England and just start taking land, did we? We stayed here. Dude, I, uh, I had a, uh, um, Colombian gentleman that I used to work with that came up to me and just started cussing me out one day. I'm gonna I work it at a grocery store. Uh-huh. He's like, well, fuck you. What? Yeah, you blah, blah. what the hell are you talking about? I didn't come over to your country and start murdering all your people. You wouldn't celebrate it either, would you? I'm like, what? Now, mind you, I quit paying attention to what day of the week it was <laughs> yeah, after no, high right. school. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> so it was apparently Columbus Day that day, and he's like, he's like, oh yeah, Christopher Columbus, Columbus Day. You didn't know that? And I'm like, no. He's like, you're white. You didn't know it was Christopher Columbus Day. I'm like, hold on, time out. Wait a minute. Okay, you understand that I'm Irish, so m- while your family or your ancestors or whatever were busy getting raped and pillaged by the Spanish, mine were getting raped and pillaged by the freaking English. Like, don't talk to me about like, <laughs> like what are you saying to me, dude? But yeah, there's a, there's a certain point, you know. Where it's- Everybody's got to back off, you know. And I mean, it's a there's a point where you also have to try to be understanding too. Exactly. And, you and, you and, don't you don't solve anything by by causing rifts. You like you. Yeah. Blessed is the peacemaker. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless you're running an election, in which case, yeah, everybody has to act like an idiot. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know? This, this election. Is well, crazy. Well, all that's for is so we can whittle down our Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> just, no, I, just, I just use elections to just shorten up the list of friends yeah. on my Facebook. Yeah. It's hey. real easy. <laughs> and I, it's just... uh, there's a meme that uh, keeps showing up on pay- Facebook. It says, "I refuse to to uh, delete people. I'm just gonna uh, post progressively more messed up things until the like the weak weed themselves out." Yeah, yeah sometimes I do that. <laughs> I just I just will just say something. No one, I'm gonna. Yeah, I mean, I, I tried to piss off both sides of the gun thing you know, uh, at the same time. Yeah, you know, just go in there and be like, "It was pretty successful." You look, know? guys, Adolf Hitler took all the guns, yeah. so what? Then it'll piss all the left off, and then yeah, I don't stuff. think we should open carry. <laughs> and all your all of a sudden, your right wing buddies are like, <laughs> yeah. "Dude, <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, people are too uh, they're too easy to to frazzle anymore." I think what needs ultimately we need a we need a constitution. Like we have, that just guarantees that nobody gets screwed with. Everybody can do whatever they want, so long as they're not hurting anybody else. And we live in relative harmony. And then, I, I don't know. After that, whatever. It's just a matter of maturity. Is this is 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 being right in this situation worth this relationship? No. Then shut up. Who yeah. cares? <laughs> you know. No, it's just it's the the inmates are running the asylum right now. It's talking points. Uh, and a lot of it is because you may have many things in this. Look, I can go all over the internet, find all kinds of information. Yeah. But you're walking into ghettos where only what your point of view source is reported. Yeah. You know, and it's just, I can go here and see this, this, and this. It may be wrong. Yeah. Since it's from a source that agrees with my worldview. Mm-hmm. I don't care how much evidence you pile in front of me. That's what they I'm call. I'm not yeah. gonna believe you. Yeah, that's what they call a confirmation you know, bias. Yeah, I am not gonna. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, if my chosen site says that the sun rises in the west and sets in the east, yeah, you can stand me face in the east all day long. I'm gonna tell you it's photoshopped or a special effect, or yeah. you know, you guys are hypnotizing me or you put drugs in my soda. Yeah, you know exactly. That's exactly how this is working right now. If Alex know? Jones says that Barack Obama was born in Kenya, then he was born in Kenya, and I don't care what anybody says. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I used to listen to a lot of that talk radio stuff, a lot. And like, I remember when like I was growing up, my dad listened to Rush Limbaugh all the time, <laughs> and uh, yeah. for a long time, he was the only one that was on the radio. You know, he was the only one that had the right wing voice. He was the only voice, you know. Uh, and then people got tired of his crap. And then it was like kind of, you know, the industry, talk radio industry kind of got a little bigger. And, uh, and he got popped for doing pills. And everybody started thinking, oh, this guy's a hypocrite. He's telling people that they should be locked up for doing drugs. Meanwhile, he's doing heroin in capsized form, you know, or capsule form. <laughs> like, but uh, plus all of his, 
don't know. It, it gets old or whatever. But it, it's not about the right or the left, and it's not about black or white. It's no. about rich people and poor people. Oh, uh, George Carlin. <laughs> that's right. It's exactly what it is. It's about rich people and poor people. I think what it what it ultimately is is about like, I don't know, people versus people, man. I think that's what it is. I know I know rich people that are super nice, you know. Like they don't really screw people over. I know, I know, I know poor people that are douchebags. You know, oh yeah, on like, an individual basis you can have that, but yeah. policy is written. Okay, okay, all right, all right, I see where which we're going. Affects yeah. overall the lives of. I do think you know? that it's kind of screwed up that um, corporations are allowed to write laws and then and then give it to a congressman and say, hey, you can take credit for this or whatever, I and mean, just just introduce this bill. And we'll give you a hundred thousand billion billion trillion dollars, like that's how Obamacare got got written. Like that was written by insurance companies. Oh, it was yeah. written by insurance <clears> lobbyists, <throat> and, and and it got and, pushed you know, through. And you know, and Obamacare works the way your state wants it to work. Yeah, it's it it is it is intentionally flawed. Oh yeah. And what's the problem with all that is is it, it kind of creates um like a focal point. So when whenever anybody wants to wants to pitch a good idea for mm-hmm. socialized medicine, like, hey, maybe the extreme should be covered. And then if you want something that's a little bit like extra, like you want to get LASIK instead of glasses, well, okay, pay extra for it. Yeah. But if you want to go get glasses, that's fine. We'll yeah. cover that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like those kinds of like ideas are are they're thrown out because they're lobbed into this shitty plan that no one seems to like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody yeah. that I've ever talked to, this might be completely completely anecdotal, but everyone that I've ever talked to that's ever had to deal with Obamacare hates it, hates yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and a like, lot of it, and it really does depend on where you live, how it works. Exactly. It's not a one size fits all thing. Yeah. You know, my son's girlfriend is a teacher's aide. One of the teachers at her school has Obamacare. For her son, the state of Texas, where she resides, does not cover certain head injuries, you know, situations he has. Yeah. I don't know exactly what the, the point being. He They drive to Arkansas. Just stop and think. Arkansas. Yeah. To get him taken care of under Obamacare. She lives in Texas. She is a Texas resident. She pays for her Obamacare in Texas. She's got to go to Arkansas. Yeah. Now, if you're now, let's, let's stop and think. You're Texas. You're being outdone by Arkansas. Yeah. That's just, that's kind of a point <laughs> of like pride too. You with know, me, like Arkansas, with the, the marijuana legalization. Like, come on, Texas. You just let two hippie states beat you. Are you out of your mind? I thought this was like the land of like we're gonna show up and 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 make business, make money, like. What are y'all doing? You you like legalize the shit. What do you do? What I don't know if you can get weed to grow here, to be honest with you. I know it grows anywhere, but most of Texas is like topsoil and clay, but yeah, they're beating you and uh, I kind of diverge. I'm sorry, I digress from yeah, the Obama kid thing. Kind of beating you. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, it's not in that too far to go. You can, you yeah. know, talking about uh, you know, cannabinoid oil and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, they got beat by Arkansas. Can you believe that? Arkansas can I mean it's yeah, I mean, you know, I'm sure they'd change it if someone said, "Well, you know, they could get treated in Oklahoma." Yeah. you guys would fix it immediately. Yeah, exactly. And all you had to do was say Oklahoma was going to beat us to that, and you guys would fix it. Is that yeah. uh, is there any state like that up there in uh, the the Rust Belt? Like, I know, uh, like New York has New Jersey, Texas has Oklahoma. These these, these states hate each other. Well, you know? a lot of it's mostly rivalries because of college football. Ah, uh, okay. You know, you know, Ohio State's Michigan. And it's over college football. Okay. But if I'm a resident of the state of Ohio, I don't pay out-of-state fees to attend a state Michigan school and vice versa. Oh, really? Really. That's cool. I would have to pay out-of-state fees to attend a university in Texas, Uh, meaning I would pay more than a Texas resident to attend the same class. They make so much money off shit like that in Texas. They do that in... uh, It's not just the Texas does that. A lot of states do that where they charge... Not only I'm not gonna you know I don't want to dump on just Texas because of this. Yeah. Because other states will God charge more Texas. money. Will charge you know charge more money for out of state yeah. students. You know it's not only Texas does this, 
But, you know, some states have what's called a reciprocity agreement. And Ohio and Michigan happen to do that. Yeah. Where if you're from Michigan, you don't pay out-of-state fees to attend college in Ohio and vice versa. Even though when Ohio State plays Michigan, there's still going to be a battle. Yeah. But, you know, it's kind of, and I don't know if other states do it. They move, may do. But, you know, Texas isn't the only one that will charge more for, say, if you're from Texas and you go to Ohio, you're going to pay out-of-state tuition. Yeah. But if you're from Michigan, you don't. I wonder if they do that with Texas and Oklahoma. I wonder if you uh, if you live in Oklahoma and uh, you decide, hey, I'm in, you know, uh, I don't know, Oklahoma City, and I want to go to UNT. I don't or, know. I don't know that much about the you know the Oklahoma Texas thing, except that it's a big rivalry in football. You know, that's the only thing I really know about it. I don't know, Oklahoma, most of Oklahoma used to be part of Texas. Uh, Oklahoma yeah, Texas was Texas was Mexico, so you know. Yeah, there was a couple of uh, Civil War battles fought in Oklahoma up there, even though it wasn't a state at the time. Um, it was still a territory, but it's like its own country up there. Like we were talking about earlier about how like everything is like a different culture and the United States, yeah. it's not just one big melting pot. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a big stew, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, it's and to many States, Texas is its own country. It looks yeah. very foreign. Yeah. You know, and, and it is, if you're not from here, it, it's hard to explain how it does seem different. You know what I mean? It seems real different to me and Pete, and, and it makes sense when we discuss it amongst ourselves. But trying to explain to you guys, you guys don't really understand. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh yeah, you know, I it, mean, it's just, it is just a, it's not bad. It's just different. Different way of life. It's just different, is all. You know, it, it, just like uh, northwestern Pennsylvania is very different from where I come from. You know, and I've lived in Pittsburgh. I've lived in uh, just below Erie, PA, which is on the lake. So you're in the Appalachian Mountain areas. And, but then I've lived in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, which is a little farther out. And, and honestly, you know, Ohio, Ohio is almost like Texas in many ways. Uh, just the way they focus on high school football. Uh, you know, high school football is just as big a deal there as it is here. Yeah. So that wasn't too different for me, except I lived in Cuyahoga County, which is the one Democratic county in the entire state. So it's a little different. Uh, a Baptist church, very hard to find. You know, down here, they're all over the place. It's just uh, little things that add up, you know. No. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, well, um, it's, it's just culturally different, but, it, you know, but we don't tell, have, like, like I've said to somebody once, is look, you know, white people don't all come from a place called white people land. Uh-uh. We're, uh-uh. We're, we're different. We come from Mars. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. But we're different, you know. <laughs> and <clears throat> just like, you know, you can't just say, one and the other. This is where we're getting off into all kinds of crap anyway. Right? Yeah. But, you know, I've yeah, seen a guy trying to, you know, tell me he'd, a guy from an ethnic group, an oppressed ethnic group, minority, saying stuff about another oppressed minority. So, what do you mean? Well, you can't say that. That's not how Indians look, particularly American Indians. Let me pull up some pictures. Those aren't Indians. Uh, what do you mean those aren't Indians? Yeah. Well, they don't look at, uh, you're giving me a stereotypical notion of what an American Indian looks like. Yeah. And you're half Mexican and half African American, so why can't you see yeah, the hypocrisy what you're here. doing yeah. in, you know, in stereotyping this particular ethnic group? You know, and he saw pictures and he thought he was looking at black people. Oh. And to my eyes, they didn't look like black people. Yeah. But they did to him. You know. And I was like, who are those people? Well, they're relatives. No, <laughs> no shit. It's, it's off my sister-in-law's Facebook page. That's her That's her mom. That's her dad. That's her grandmother. Yeah. You know, that's her brother. You know. My, uh, my cousin um, is, he's a card-carrying member of the Cherokee Nation. Oh, right. He's got, uh, he's got, he's one 128th Indian, which is like the lowest amount of Indian blood that they will consider oh, yeah? he's still a member. So he has to marry an Indian girl, or his family's out with him. Oh, you know? uh, okay. So uh, pressure's on. He's super white. Like the rest of his family, like so he's he, he's not just white. He's like unhealthily white. He can't go out in the sun for very long or get a sunburn. Like he uh-huh. he looks he looks pale. He looks albino, but he's not. Yeah, I got a brother like that. He's he's the ginger that's a lobster in the summer. Yeah, he's the one that married a black girl. Yeah, <laughs> he's the one that glows in the dark. Yeah, his picture's next to white boy in the dictionary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My cousin has white boy tattooed on his hands. <laughs> yes, he has white. Was it a reminder? <laughs> well, 
I guess. I don't know. <laughs> In case he didn't know how to spell it, but he's got white and boy tattooed on either one of his hands. Well, maybe it's a spelling issue. I don't yeah. Know. Uh, he's, he sucks at spelling, dude. Uh, he grew up in uh, Oklahoma and and Michigan, and uh-huh. uh, the the school up in Michigan that he went to, my my father actually went to. He had the same teachers that my dad did. Oh, really? A couple of the same teachers uh, wow. in elementary and middle middle school, or whatever. But uh, dude, they don't they don't teach phonics in the entire country. They they teach you to recognize words in some spots still. Really? So wow, you just you just supposed to memorize it. I was raised in phonics. Yeah, so was I. Yeah. My dad, um, he was raised to read, like, I know for a fact that S-T-O-P spells stop, but I don't know why. I just know that it spells stop, and he mm-hmm. learns to read that way. Well, your handwriting sucks when that happens because, according to him, he, he would overcompensate because uh-huh. um, he didn't want people to realize that he couldn't spell, so he would just have terrible handwriting so they wouldn't be able to tell that, oh, he it's can't ready. spell. They're just saying he can't he can't write. So... Which, I don't know, whatever. I never, I didn't make any sense now that I just spoke it, but he tells the story a lot better. Um, but he taught me how to read when I was like two years old. To, he started teaching me how to read when I was like two. I don't know when I finished, but um, he got this thing called the phonics game. I don't know if they still sell it or not, but it's just flashcards and videos. And uh-huh. like I think there might have been a board game where if you like if you spelled something correctly, you move your piece to the forward and whoever got to the end wins. It's just something simple. Uh-huh. And um, the video would be like, okay, like it take you through each syllable. Like S and T makes the st, that's st, the st, st yeah, sound. You right. know, like yeah. O has two sounds. You go O and ah, uh, ah, I think. Stop. Yeah, ah. So it, that makes two sounds. Yeah. And then, you know, it, X, it's it's like a K and an S, but it, you know, it, it just takes you through all the syllables and all the phonetics yeah. or whatever. And then, like, now when you see these words smushed together, you figure it out. Yeah, you fi- uh, right. Okay, mm-hmm. so the people that are listening. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't teach that in in Shelby, Michigan, Oceana County, Michigan. Wow. They have to, like, uh, blueberry. Blueberry is spelled B L U. B L U E B E R R Y. I can't read for whatever reason. I'm looking at a bottle and like, and they, you'd have like spelling tests or whatever. We it was it's a memory game rather than a, I understand the 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 freaking mechanics of it or whatever. Yeah. And essentially. You, you don't want to read. You don't want to. You don't want to participate. You want to go work in a factory. Uh, I, that's the that's the point. You I know? just want to make the point. That how long is it going to be before we relearn that L O O S E does not spell lose? Yeah. I mean, I, and I and this happened lose. when the, the internet the internet exploded and lose was no longer spelled L O S E. It's like as soon as we plugged in the internet, it became two O's. Yeah. And I can't figure out why this happened. And you can't unteach anyone. Uh-uh. It's like <gasps> persisted to the point where it will know. It was gonna be like you know Chaucer's English, being able to spell correctly just in comparison. I'm not gonna lie to you. I grew up a mean little kid, so I think I learned how to spell loser before I learned how to spell lose. So I never yeah, had that yeah, problem. But losers only got one O. Yeah, but <laughs> <You know>? yeah, <laughs> lose and loser both got one O. Uh, <laughs> you know, loose is in not tight is two O. Yeah, but that's how you that's how you remember is 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 uh, loose is the one that isn't spelt like loser. You know what I'm saying? If you make those like little micro memory things like oh that's how I remember this like uh, there there and there like T H I E R refers to oh there's an I yeah, in it so that right. belongs to me so. It's their set of keys. They that's theirs or whatever. But like here, uh, here the word here is hidden in one of them, and that means that refers to a location. So we say T H E R E or whatever. That's it's over there. That's how. But so you gotta have a little a little bit of uh, empathy for somebody trying to learn English. Yeah. You say C O M B comb T O M B tomb B O M B bomb. Okay. And they look at you. My <laughs> you my know? cousin cannot. I, I rip on him all the time. But I don't want anybody to rip on him. You know. I, I won't say his name. I won't say the name Jeff McKegg. I won't okay. say the name Jeff McKegg. I won't say that Jeff McKegg can't spell. I won't say that. So, anyway. He he cannot spell the word tomorrow. Who was that? Jeff McKegg. Oh, okay. My cousin's name is Jeff McKegg. Your cousin? I'm not going to, yeah. This is your cousin? Yeah, he's my cousin. He's named Jeff McKegg? His name is Jeff McKegg, and he can't spell. Okay. Yeah. He's probably going to hate me. <laughs> he doesn't know what I look like, so it's great. <laughs> yeah. 
No, you met him the other day. Oh, oh I, I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, the skinny dude with the mohawk. He looks like a Viking. I wouldn't have said all that if I didn't know it was him. I no. liked him. Yeah, well, he's a good dude, dude. He's a good dude. Yeah. One of the, one of the, one of the, the the hallmarks of a good friend and a good like person like that is they can take ridicule. They don't get like easily. Like, I guarantee you, the second he hears this, he's going to come up with, like, five other things that he's going to rip on me for. Well, that'd be good then. Yeah. yeah that's good. Then. But uh, anyway, uh, tomorrow, the kid has such a, like, every time he texts me, hey, hey, you mind if I uh, uh, get you a car to, to, to Matro? To Matro. I think he sent me one time, and I was like, what? I, like, actually screen capped it, circled it with the with the, with the pain <laughs> function, and then sent it to him. And then I, and then I, I looked it up on Google. And I screen capped that because Google didn't even know what the hell he was trying to say to me. <laughs> like, you mean tomorrow, asshole? <laughs> it's like, I always try to encourage people, though. Like, I, I rip on them, and I'm like, you know, like, I wasn't born a good speller either. I'm, the uh, spell check function or whatever on, like, Microsoft Word or, or yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm completely dependent on that. You take that away, I'm worthless. But I had a friend whose wife was a teacher. Anytime he had to write something, fucking, you used spell check, didn't you? I can tell. Yeah. What do you mean you can tell? You can always tell when somebody uses spell check. Half it's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> His wife is an English teacher, and if he used spell check, it, you could tell. Well, now they got uh, they got stuff like Grammarly where, dude, like, computers are getting crazy, man. They got Elon Musk that, that wants to get us to Mars, and he owns Tesla and, and uh -huh. SpaceX and all these other companies. What do we want on Mars? Uh, he Minerals. wants to, okay. no, well, he wants to set up a, this guy literally, he thinks that we need to get to another planet before an asteroid hits us and no more humanity. He wants us to spread like a disease before we're cured. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm with him. You know, we are the death star. So yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, you ever see that cartoon? Um, there's like a hundred different versions of it, but like, it's like the earth and the moon are, are, are getting intimate with each other and like they're, they're talking afterwards and. Earth calls the moon, and he's like, hey, uh, I just want you to know you might want to get checked out. Uh, I uh, have a case of humans. And he's like, what? And the moon's like, what? What? And then Neil Armstrong's standing there with an American flag, and the moon's like, no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I said before, you know, C students. Yeah, man. <clears throat> Everything's run by C students. It is what it is. Some of those... Some people are C students in areas that they should be C students in, and other areas not so much. Like, uh, in college, these past couple of classes that I've been taking, I just, I don't, I don't care. Like, we're taking, like, history of the documentary right now. I'm so ready to be done with school and start working on, like, hands-on stuff. Yeah. That I just, I don't care about the freaking factoids. I just don't. I don't care that Louis Lamar... The yeah, he made a movie in 1936. It wasn't even the first movie that was made. Why do I want to watch this freaking documentary on the on the uh, made in the 30s about swing dancing? What is this? Like, there's not enough movies to pull out of in the past 30 years that have been made that you can teach me something. Could be worse. <sighs> could be worse. Oh yeah. Could be a lot worse. Oh yeah, because they could decide that. We're going to bring in the writers as filmmaker course. I had to take one like that. I had to do that too, I think. Yeah, but the writers and filmmakers were not. Oh, you're talking about people that wrote movies instead of making them. No, they, they wrote and then they made movies. Oh. So you were a writer like John Genet. I know this name. We had to read Our Lady of Flowers by John Genet. Our Lady of Flowers. Which is this huge book of homosexual fantasy. You're kidding me. And then me. watch one of his films, a short film, which was a black man masturbating. Oh. Yeah, that was the Jean Genet section of that See, class. You, could anybody recognize how like something like that would be at least unappealing? Uh, and maybe I it don't It might wanna... be unappealing to many people, I would think. I yeah, mean, but... I'm sure there's a there's a market for it. That's how it got made, and that's how it made it into a textbook. But, but yeah, the... I mean... General population just kind of wants to work on Pasolini, and... you know. Oh, yeah. great, pa Pasolini, another one. All right, you know. The, you know, Beckett saved us because you know, at least Beckett worked with Buster Keaton. Buster Keaton runs; he does his flip, keeps running. No, yeah. good. <laughs> it, it beat the Pasolini film. That's what it is. Yeah, so you know, it's 
you'll you, you just get some weird stuff. And in a state university, you know, what you get, I found, was sometimes you get really, really good because they don't fit in, mm. you know. And sometimes you get really, really poor because nobody else wants them. You yeah. know? And sometimes you just get oddball enough that they nobody really knows how to handle them, but you're really glad they landed at your university because they're really cool, you know. And yeah, you run into shit. a couple of those, you know. It's, it's 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 mostly it's the the faculty at a university because having I mean, working for a university that's as far as I want to go is say it's the faculty at the university yeah. and leave everything well enough alone, you know, because as we see we've got people and then we've got institutions and. Uh -huh. the, the, yeah, when if it's one and one for some reason it works, when we start getting the institutions involved, it's a whole other story. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I just clean toilets. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, so do I. So, <laughs> we'll just say that real quick. Oh man, what did you? Uh, what was your animation influence? You asked me that earlier. What did you end up? Uh, well, I grew, grew up. I grew up watching influence? a lot of old stuff. You know, I mean, really, really old stuff. Because in 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 my childhood, you know. You had local television. You only had like three networks. Yeah. So yeah, you, know, you had three channels you chose from to watch television. Exactly. You yeah. Know? ABC, later on, NBC, CBS. Yeah. Then later on, you might get a UHF station or two. Yeah. You know, AB, NBC, CBS. You know, maybe they were VHS. And then you had not VHS. You had very high frequency and then ultra high frequency. Yeah. UHF was usually a local station also. So there was a lot of local television. They needed content. No. There were the network feeds, obviously, at night. But for the rest of the day, what are you putting on? You had didn't have any content. No. So you would. that's how you would get things like uh, the traditional Saturday or Friday night monster movie host. You know? That kind of thing, because oh, okay. <clears throat> at one point, um, Universal Pictures sold a package of their old films right. to various television stations across the country so they could have content to put on the yeah. air. And it was, I think it was called Shock Theater or something like that. Yeah. And all the uh, all the local te television stations would take the weatherman or the guy that did the children's uh, TV show in the morning or or even a guy that did sports, it didn't matter. They'd take one of the guys and dress him up like a monster or something, and he would introduce the horror movie. Yeah. Same yeah. thing with local newscasters, wow. you know. I grew up with a woman named Dorothy Fuldheim, who, who had inter she interviewed Hitler. She interviewed Mussolini. Oh. Yeah, this she was heavy-duty. But uh, <clears throat> that's why you had these primitive packages of of cartoons left over from the theatricals. That was your Warner Brothers films. Yeah. You know, stuff that appeared in the theaters were now being shown in television. You know, it was only when you started getting the Hanna-Barbera studios that you had stuff that was made for television and television budgets. You know, those old Roadrunners and stuff, those were not made for a TV budget. <laughs> it's too yeah, much yeah. motion. Yeah, you know, it's too much, yeah. And that's what I started watching. And then later on, you get, I'll oh, say, the guy that uh, designed Yogi Bear and Fred Flintstone worked on Johnny Bravo. Yes, true. So, you know, the, the, so you there's know, a long uh, history of that, but they, basically that's it's a very beginning of television kind of thing with me because I'm so old. You know, there was, <laughs> you would, TV <laughs> would just bring what worked before, guys from theater, guys from radio yeah you know stuff like that and that's what made their prime time during the day you were on your own your local people were your your sportscasters your newscasters your your guys doing the weather and they did all other stuff like they did children's programming late night horror movie you knew these people they lived down the street from you yeah you know what i mean so it was truly local and everybody saw it because there were only three channels to watch yeah. You know what I mean? So everybody pretty much knew who everybody was, you know? Like, I'm sure there are people who know who some of the local sportscasters are in the DFW area. Yeah. You know, I can't name any, but I don't watch enough TV that I could name. But I'm sure know, there are people that know. Head. Yeah, exactly. You know, but at, uh, when I was a kid, there was definitely there were only three channels. So everybody knew everybody. Yeah. You know, 
and there was almost a, more of a sense of community because everybody knew everybody because there's a lot of local flavored stuff would be sponsored by TV stations. It's like that uh that Ron Burgundy movie or whatever where it's in the 70s. Have you ever seen that movie? Yeah, I've yeah. seen it. And he was a he was a local celebrity in that small little bitty area mm -hmm. or whatever, that local TV or whatever, but every town had them. You know, it's crazy. I actually read you know, about this stuff. Like I read about like ultra, ultra high uh, UHF. Yeah. yeah, I read about UHF and VHF, yeah. or whatever. Well, a lot of locals were like, "You've ever seen the uh, the original Night of the Living Dead?" Yeah, yeah, the uh, the one that that basically spawned the uh, okay. Dawn of the Dead series. The newscaster. Okay. Okay, that was Chili Billy Cardilly, who who did the. Friday night horror films in Pittsburgh. Okay. He worked for the local television station. Yeah. I don't remember if it was KDKA or, or which station, but he just worked local news and he played the newscaster in, you know, Night of the Living Dead. My wife uh, went to the Art Institute of Pittsburgh down there and she had teachers that played zombies in the movie. Okay. You know, but that was kind of like a Romero wound up there with, I've been to the mall. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the Monroeville Mall or they did the second movie. Yeah. yeah. I, we used to go shopping there. So I knew exactly which mall they had zombies were running around. Uh, I mean, they that's did crazy. That. But, you know, and, and, you know, we lived across the river from where Andy Warhol grew up. But uh, yeah. you had, you know, local television was very much alive where people knew who they were. It was not this cold thing where you had 9,000 channels and you didn't really know the people. They yeah. were in your neighborhood. They were playing softball at the church. You know, yeah. we have one guy named Goulardi whose uh, son made, later made a movie called Boogie Nights. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And uh, this guy, Goulardi, it, it doesn't play well now, you know, because it's dated, you know. Oh, yeah. But it was like, uh, he was kind of a hipster and kind of a punk, and uh, everybody watched TV when his show came on, and he showed the same old horror movies everyone else, one else did. Yeah. You know, he just blew up model cars with uh, firecrackers, and then he'd get the whole crew together from the TV station, and they'd go around town playing softball games. Huh. And then they bring cameras, and you were going to watch his show because he had the camera at the game, and you might be on TV because they always pointed the camera at the crowd. Yeah. And then the proceeds paid for operation for kids. Okay. And there are people that went back years later, you know, I'm one of the kids that your softball game paid for to get an operation and it, you know they did all kinds of shit like that yeah but you know it was a very much a, a community thing that you know it's never coming back you know what's weird is you know it, it's almost like uh if, ever, if you listen to podcasts and all the guys live down the street from you yeah you know what I mean? yeah <laughs> actually yeah we're kind of bringing it back you know. dude that's weird um we, you know how we were talking about earlier how there's kind of a pattern uh Way back in the day, like like you were saying before, Kurz Light, there were breweries. Yeah, and then Kurz Light showed up, and then all of a sudden, Paps and and the breweries went away, and it's it's just all this crap. Yeah, and then now they're back because the technology's changed, and and like you go to Texas or whatever, and it exploded. But it wasn't always like that. There weren't micro breweries everywhere when I was growing up here in Texas, you know. Uh -huh. But uh, kind of same thing with like like TV, like local TV, or whatever. Nobody watches local TV anymore. Everyone watches Fox News. Cable kind of ruined that. But now we got this new thing called the internet where yeah. we're starting to become more and more connected. So yeah. what we lost, we're kind of getting back with, like, new technology. Well, and then watching anything the way of a news event, you know, you're going to see far different things than what the network news is showing you. Yeah. Which can be a good thing as far as news is concerned because I know when the St. Louis riots are going on that – uh my sons were watching a far different thing than I was watching because I had network television on. They were watching screaming, and there was two different things going on. Yeah. It was like there were two different events when we sat down and talked about it. Yeah, yeah. it was like I was watching one part of the country, and they were watching a, something in another country or on another planet or something. It was so, <laughs> it was so different from what I was being shown by the network news or from what they were watching happening on the street. Yeah streaming live that's insane man you know uh that pete the guy from new york he uh he listens to his favorite local um radio show oh yeah every day and it's in it's in new york and uh -huh. they, they 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 record the show they put it online immediately after the show's over and he listens to it that day you know he doesn't get to have to miss out on it because normally you wouldn't be able to do something like you move to san francisco from New York, and uh -huh. guess what? Modern early radio just ain't 
morning early radio anymore, you know, like, right. Like technology's just, yeah. Cause it, yeah. well, yeah, it became a morning zoo and everybody had a morning zoo. Yeah. yeah, yeah and exactly. they were doing the same thing. But when you got something local, you know, you guys, uh, okay. Nobody else is going to get it. If you're making a joke about Plano, but everybody around here is going to get it. If there's some kind of joke about Plano, yeah. cause they know Plano, you know, exactly. It's the same thing we did in Cleveland. They had a, it was all, all I do was say Parma. And they play polka music. Oh. Uh, you know, and nobody uh, understands that unless you're from Cleveland. And Parma was where there was a large Polish population. Yeah. The only reason why I was even able to decipher that is because we were talking about how there's Poles up there. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. There's a large Polish population. And, and it, you know, that was the joke. And, you know, if you're living around, in, in the, the other part of the joke was they all had chrome balls in the front yard and uh, pink flamingos. Yeah. Which is kind of true. I mean, you go to that particular suburb, it's a bunch of guys in white socks named Stosh. You know, they got pink flamingos in the front yard, and it's just the Polish yeah. section. You ever see that Family Guy gag where the uh, the dog and the, the Peter, he's on the, they're on the plane going to Ireland, and he's like, uh, they're Irish, they're all, they're all uh, uh, alcoholics there. <laughs> and the dog's like, Peter, not every stereotype is true. You should, it's offensive. You shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't believe everything you hear. I mean, all the plane lands and the runway is just covered in beer bottles. Like Guinness, <laughs> Guinness bottles all over the place. They had to like the plane had to bulldoze its way through to the end of the runway. Like <laughs> yeah. that's because you know all they got is grass and sheep. Yeah. You know? I mean, just, have you ever been to an Irish restaurant? You ever seen one? There's uh, a reason they don't exist. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Exactly. It's just like my grandmother was Irish. She biled everything. Well, yeah. It's just like. Yeah, Grandma, you're not supposed to boil steak. Yeah. Um, boil it all. Well, yeah. anyway, you have enough, enough whiskey in you, and you do matter. Yeah, it doesn't boil matter. You know, what do you need to taste for anyway? <laughs> <laughs> We're just filling our bellies. Shut up. Yeah. Shut up and eat your grass. Yeah. Eat the uh, <coughs> eat that nasty crap. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Dude, we've done this for two hours. You're gonna have to edit this like crazy. No, this isn't. Good. Are you out of your <laughs> mind? It's like crazy. We're not man. editing shit. You're gonna find anything any good, you know? Uh, no, 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 no. This is going online as it is. I mean, I'm gonna keep the part where uh, Reina and uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, that's a good. That's, even, be- that's even better. It's even keep better. Something like that. You know, when yeah. guys walk in, you know, they walk in. I'll make fun of them on the air. Piece of equipment. Yeah. We should have kept that in yeah. too. You know? <laughs> what, was, what was that explosion? That was real, folks. Yeah. Next time uh, Matthew Rana gets on the podcast, we'll have to make fun of him. We'll have to do one with you and him on it. You'll you'll enjoy this kid. He's uh he's very knowledgeable in terms of uh, like politics and whatnot. Like, oh no, yeah. not that. We don't need anybody knowledgeable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it takes like, the... Oh yeah, get somebody that knows what they're talking about. Sure. Yeah, exactly. It takes all the fun out of the. Uh... Exactly. Look, if I can't if I can't stick to my confirmation bias, I don't want to talk to you. Well, you know, <laughs> if I haven't heard of it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If I don't understand it. It's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's useless if I haven't heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll stand by it if I don't understand it. It's wrong. Yeah. Remember, and I may not know anything about it, but I hold a very strong opinion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If it if it sounds like hippie garbage, then I don't want nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a bunch of hippie garbage to me. So <laughs> I still can't figure that one out because all the hippies are they're in old folks' homes now. They're older than me. I'm yeah. too young to be a hippie. I know. I'm going to be 60 years old. I'm too young to be a hippie. Yeah, it's crazy. Isn't they're it? all in old folks' homes now, right now. They're, just, they're all just smoking joints and hitting the bong. And I was talking to my grandfather. Writing in, uh, writing in longhand so nobody can read. Yeah. A longhand. You know, writing in script. Oh, uh, well, I have no idea. It's way over my head. Instead of printing. Oh, oh my bad. I'm sorry. I'm a uh, stupid kid. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> You know what I mean? Because that's what we're going to do when we're old. We're all going to write everything in longhand because yeah. we know nobody will be able to read it. And so we can write all over the bathroom walls at yeah. 90 years old. Yeah. What are they writing? I can't read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> writing it's seditious. a secret technique we learned when we were in grade school. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Try reading this. That's going to happen with cursive before too long, man. That's what I'm talking about. Cursive. Longhand's another way of saying cursive. Oh, why don't you tell me that then? <laughs> all right. Wow, I'm an idiot. Yeah, just like cursive, you know, nobody's gonna be ready. No, it, it's I, I don't. Are they insulting us or what? We yeah. don't know. What are all these squiggles? They're gonna cry. They yeah. won't understand. It. Let them all cry. I think they're being mean, but I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is what it is, man. Well, you think we should wrap this up? We we'll come back in another. Uh... Yeah, because we're gonna, you know, we've already there's two or three people listening. 
Yeah, so, two or three people listening. Two or, here. You know, if there's three of them, two are asleep by now, and the yeah. third one's loading the gun and coming looking for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They talk too goddamn well. Well, my cousin Jeff McKegg, who can't spell, is probably going <laughs> to oh, be okay. looking for us pretty soon. Once again, my cousin Jeff McKegg, who the one that can't spell, the one that can't spell, <laughs> okay, is probably going to be looking for us pretty soon. Um, yeah, I'm looking for. Uh, the, some outro music to play, and then we'll call this thing a freaking podcast, dude. Thanks for coming on, man. This was oh, fun. Was we fun. gotta do this again. Like we can do it again. Yeah, we might even make more sense next time. We oh, have no. a narrative people could follow, or I don't need a narrative anybody can follow. I got oh, okay. used to that. All right. So it's <laughs> gonna be Dada is what we're gonna do, right? Yeah, Dada. We're gonna sit here and say things like candy and ears, candy and ears. Um, where? Oh, where? I bet it's right here. This is the thing. I gotta turn it's it off. Next to an umbrella, I swear. We're gonna turn about dot it's next to an umbrella. What do you think about Fuzzy Taco? <laughs> <laughs> this okay. podcast was brought to you by Fuzzy Tacos. Not really, it was brought to you by me and I brought the tacos, but whatever. I need a sponsor. But uh, yeah, here we go. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. I got uh I got our music rigged up to play so i guess without further ado i got a call from my proctologist he'd like to sponsor you yeah and uh on that note have a good night oh it's not playing why is it not playing somehow it works better than it not work what is this not playing for what you're gonna have to get a kazoo, John. Yeah, I am. Huh. You know it'll work. Just play that as the outro. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll edit it later or not. Whatever. This thing doesn't need an outro. Screw it. Bye, everybody. <laughs>